Welcome back everyone. We're going to start our stream now. Um, we're watching Robert Fletcher and Matthew Essick. And uh, Robert's about to take the third ball in, first ball in. And very soon we will be joined by Chris Clark, who is going to do some commentary for us this afternoon. Very soon I'll have another cameraman ready for you as well. But for now, hopefully, my little camera here will show you some of the action. Right, so back to the start of game four. Robbie Fletcher playing first with the blue ball and he's finished short again so again in that first game of the match it was Robbie's position that was uh, struggling very good comeback from Matthew in the third I think he was 3-1 uh, down and came back to win 7-4 excellent hoop shots at Hoop 7 and then run Hoop 11 from the north boundary behind Hoop 10. So, can he maintain that elevated stand of play? And he's missed his first shot. So, Blue's obviously runnable. It looks tough to me. Red's a lot straighter. Oh, my. And yeah, I was surprised to see Yellow shoot there. I thought, I thought another ball in position looked perfectly playable. Um, Blue's just moved red. Quite surprisingly, hasn't cut it on the left-hand side. I think I would have been wanting to deny Matthew this hoop attempt. Um, try and cut it quarter ball on the left and move it towards quarter corner one. And Matthew back to his Irish grip, going to take on this 70-yard hoop. Lawn's now clearly quicker than at 10 o'clock this morning. Um, probably moving to around about 12 and a half. Um, probably dependent upon whether you're playing south to north or north to south. But certainly this northern section is reasonably quick. Uh, Robbie will be disappointed that with that. That was a reasonably straightforward attempt for for him uh, Matthew playing deep off the boundary so it can't be cleared that yellow ball and I think we'll see Robbie have another sort of free go here red could clear blue easily if it just took position and it potentially could hide behind it as well so lovely excellent shot Flick through off one wire, just missed hoop two. And that's a good start in this must win game for the Australian. So Matthew will be trying to get wired from this ball on the north boundary quite quick up at hoop two the length is fabulous and applause from the south boundary from i think it's sharif down there indicating that this red is fabulous and robbie's in his shooting style here so i think he's going to have a go at moving it with the black yep great shot Yeah. 
are lovely to play on lawns this speed. That's just drifted to level with the hoop, a little bit over hit. And you can see it really wasn't traveling very fast by the time it went past the peg and it's just rolled on. I'm just going to play to the short boundary side here. Um, again, in front of the hoop, but on the short boundary side. Robbie's going to be fancying powering this um, yellow away with black. Red trying to take position there. I don't think he'll have tried to just nudge blue. He may have done. Um, it certainly made it a little bit more difficult for the blue, and red has stopped in front. Um, but I think, yeah, he'll clear. He'll clear yellow and take his own hoop on with blue. Yep, good shot in the middle, but still only about 13, 14 yarder for Matthew here. Now Matthew will fancy hitting this. I think in the Bamford Fulford match you'd probably see yellow play in here, let blue have the hoop. Yeah, it's a good shot. I may have got the wire as well. I've been joined by Brian Lozano from Mexico. Welcome, Brian. Hi. Thank you. How's this looking? It's been a good, good start. Um, hoot one was run from the boundary. Um, Very good shot by Robbie. And a nice clearance there, uh, both from... Robbie from the north boundary, followed by Matthew back again in front. And now the hoop, really quite an important shot, this because yellow's on side. Um, nicely on the bound north boundary. Runnable in front of three. And what Jenny and myself mentioned during the first game of commentary was we felt Matthew was hitting it straighter with his... Irish grip yes. than when he went firmly with his Solomon. Great hoop. Nice hoop. Very nice hoop. He's got the advantage here with yellow. Right in front of three. So Robbie will try and take quite tight position here because yellow is threatening any deeper position. And it hasn't been easy these last few days as the lawns have picked up speed, they has have it? They've picked up a lot of speed since day one, absolutely. And that's just moved on. I think Matthew will fancy having a go here, won't he? I think he will. I think he will. actually quite lucky to have bounced that far away because black was sort of threatening to thrash it right miles away right. um if blue just takes good position here um, black's now got a genuine you know seven yarder looks good very good very straight good. three yard position And again, I think he'll try and clear this with the red ball because he knows yellow might not stay there. Yes. Great shot. Very good. And black sort of at 45 degrees on the corner line. Um, when the lawns are slow, 
You can fancy jaws in these, can't you? you can. But they're really quite challenging. Very challenging yeah. hoops for the jaws. Jawsing is something that I've always enjoyed in my cro short croquet career, but in these hoops, you just want to get the hoop. Yeah, I think if you're sort of two feet away at this angle, you fancy getting in the middle. Right. But from two and a half yards, it's really tough. Right. And the problem is you can't just play to four or five yard position here to stop yellow because red can just clear you. Easily. So you, your choices are probably to try for this a really difficult draw shot oh, or to yeah. play off the boundary. Yeah. I think the boundary is safer, isn't it? It is. It is safer in the way these guys have been shooting. That's good. Again, whenever you play your ball off the boundary, your opponent can't clear it. It effectively comes an outside agency, doesn't it? Right, yeah. So yellow will try and block black's hoop shot. And they're all just drifting on, aren't they? Yeah, just about two or much, three balls further. Too much. And Robbie trying to clear this straight away so Black can have a go at the hoop without... Oh, no, oh, no, no, he comes interesting. in tight. He might even want to clear with his Black instead. So he's trying to get behind Yellow so Red can't clear it. Um, and Red's forced to have a go at this because mm -hmm. Black can just clear her otherwise. We can't leave Blue there. A rare miss at that length from Matthew. Very strong at that distance. And now instead of black taking its hoop on, it will just take yellow. Take yellow, hopefully take yellow. to a wide position. Right. Oh, lovely shot. That's good. That looks good. It's been really nice to see Robert Fletcher really up his level throughout the week, right? He didn't start so strong, had to play off to get into the knockouts. Yeah, and, and great to see him come over here, having had, you know, the couple of years of COVID, where yes. playing in Australia has been really difficult. Yes. Lots of tournaments cancelled. Mm -hmm. Hasn't really been able to get that competitive play that he'd, he'd hoped to have. Right. And it started off not great mm -hmm. move to reasonable and now last couple of days he's really found his feet hasn't yes, he yes so matthew just looking at whether he can get past the hoop and i think he's open here actually Looks good. Oof, oh, wonderful. Shot. Wonderful. Shot. So tell the viewers a little bit about yourself, Brown. I think you're professional at Mission Hills. Yes. And um, you split your time partially there and partially in North Carolina. Yes. So in the winter season, I'm in Mission Hills, in uh, Palm Springs, Southern California. And in the summers, you don't want to be there. <laughs> it's a desert. Uh, you don't want to leave your house there. So in the summers, I'm in North Carolina, um, which have you been? There I haven't, time? unfortunately, been. That's all the Chattooga area. Chattooga. And, uh, oh, lovely. Wow, wow, wow. Good shot wow. the boundary by Robert. That was very really good. difficult. That was a quite angled yes, as well. Yes, that's very good. And that's the way you come back from a 25-yard clearance, right, isn't that's it? That's right. So yeah, in, uh, in that area of North Carolina where I am, it's uh, possibly the the hottest spot of croquet in the United States right now, where there's about 
15, 16 um, clubs, all with very, very active croquet programs within you know, a 15 mile radius. So it's uh, wow. very, very cool to be in that area where you can go almost anywhere in town and tell anybody if they know anything about croquet. And yeah. even if they don't play it, they, they know what it is because their club it's wonderful. has croquet. Yeah. So how many players are there in that area? Are we about a thousand? Close to two thousand. Two thousand. Two thousand. Two thousand. Very good. Yes. Yes. So Robert taking on the clearance with the first ball, and we don't see the Egyptians do this very much, do we? We no. always see the first ball play in yes. and the second ball clear. So why would this be the right line of play? Well, he hits this ball, he goes to the boundary, and you know Robert can hit anything from seven yards. So I think he's counting on hitting this. Oof, he missed that. I was thinking the other reason is, well, Red is obviously runnable, mm -hmm. and if Black takes good hoop position, and Blue, Yellow takes good hoop position, and Blue were to miss the shot we've just seen Black miss, right. then Red might not decide to take its hoop on, but could clear Robert to the far boundary, potentially getting towards hoop five correct, as well, correct. which when you're 2-1 down, when you're turning the corner four to five, you're right. always looking to try and generate that advantage at yes. five. So I think Robbie may have been worried about putting black to the western side of red. I see. Yes, you're right. And if yellow's wired from black and blue's open on the hoop, he'll be very tempted to take the hoop on. Yes. Two balls down at the hoop. I think he's just moved his hands slightly down his mallet, indicating he might be trying to jump over yellow. You think so? That's wow. very aggressive, yeah, isn't extremely. it? extremely. Oh, he's thinking about it. I mean, 2-1 up. I think that just means that black is uh, wired at yellow, no? Yeah. yeah. I've seen him take a couple of jumps um, during this week, and he does it kind of like a a, a pass roll exactly. kind of jump. Exactly, which I think is yeah. Interesting. What do you think about that? I think I'm I'm just not convinced he can get the power at this sort of 17 yard range okay. with that pass rolly right. well, that's exactly time clock. So doing. he is going over yellow. Uh, yeah, not a yeah, very yeah, good yeah. shot no, at all. No, no. Didn't get down on it, right. um, and. I'm not entirely sure what the applause is for. Maybe the referee's caught it or something. Yeah. Um, my thought was I quite fancied clearing the yellow and saying, yeah, this is a 25 degree hoop. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be guaranteed. And if he fails it, well, I'm back in the hoop then, having cleared the ball that oh, played before me. He made that look a lot easier than it looked. <laughs> he did, yes. <laughs> so he just smoothed it through. Yeah. Um, have these hoops been replaced for the semi-final? Yes, pitch? so these are brand new hoop holes. Okay, okay. Um, so those hoops already look really down on the ground yeah. for having them barely placed. One of the things we should probably point out to the viewers here is that yellow is almost forced to clear black here because blue yeah. has quite an easy snuggle up right. to this red ball. Right. So it's almost a compulsory clearance for yellow. And that's not good enough, is it? Um, black's jawsable, tough hoop to run, but the yellow's now gone a good 15 yards away from hoop five. Yeah. Rob with the advantage here. The advantage. And uh, have you spent much time with Matthew? 
No, not so much time. Um, he's from um North Carolina. However, he spends his summers in uh, New York, in uh, Quag, and his winters in Florida, in Orlando, I believe. So we get to see each other during national events. Okay. Maybe two, three times a year. Fabulous. That was a nice shot from that distance. So that was sort of the mirror image of the hoop he ran to win game three <laughs> yes. from behind hoop 10 to 11. Yes. And he's decided, well, I ran it last time. I'm going to have Let's another game. Again. <laughs> so it's in the draws. Blue can jump it. Yeah. But I think black can get it out. Maybe not very far. Yeah. But I think black's going to want to get it out because I think Matthew's going to be fancying this yellow at blue. Absolutely. It's out. Okay, so if blue does get cleared, at least it can clear red. Great shot. Good shot. Good great shot. And what does Matthew do? Matthew is also a croquet professional year round. Um, I believe he's been a croquet pro full time for at least five years, six years, somewhere around there. But um, croquet is his life. Right. <laughs> he was born into croquet, if you can say that. And just clarifying for the viewers, mm -hmm. as a croquet professional, that means he coaches. He coaches, um, offers private lessons, clinics, directing tournaments, um, and pretty much directing the croquet program for his clubs. And there's no, that's missed by a yard. That's really out of character for yes, Robbie. Yes, yes, very off. And a good opportunity not just to take a 3-2 lead, but to run this up to six. A good position at six. Um, so still no real uh, money circuit in terms of playing for money. There is uh, um, a gentleman out of West Virginia who attempted to to start something. Yeah. I don't know if you, you caught wind of that, the PCA, I believe it was called the Professional Croquet Association. Yeah. Um, and those tournaments were formatted more like a tennis open. Right. Where it was just a you know straight knockout bracket. Okay. Um, so tough to decide. You want to get an aeroplane two thousand miles and <laughs> then get a game or a match. And you'd be done in one game if you don't. <laughs> yeah. Advance, you know. Um, it's an interesting idea. I think it should be you know further developed. I think we can maybe get something there. I know um, Spain are holding um, a money tournament um, later this year, I believe. Okay. Um, GC. Mm -hmm. Um, where they're inviting players from Egypt and the UK and they're trying to get a very strong entry, which yeah. is obviously a good way to develop your own home country's top players and try and improve the standard of play within yes. Spain. Yes, yeah, Spain um, are doing things very well. True, elegant Spanish fashion. Oh my God, um, he got that. Wow. Flicked off black yeah. through hoop six. 4-2 lead now. And he just needs this game to get into the World Championship final. So, yeah, I still believe there's a lot, a lot of opportunity for Croquet to grow. And um, GC is, is, I believe, the that's the key. Right GC there. is very televisable. Yes. And dare I say it, very good to bet on. Yes. <laughs> betting in running you bet big on me, swings Chris in Clark. games big <laughs> swings in games you can be 5-1 up and suddenly you've lost yeah. so I know there'll be lots of people sitting at home going what on earth are you talking about gambling is the scourge yeah. but it's one way of bringing money into the sport mm -hmm. um, lots of sponsorship available in that direction um, and these are more volatile than a set of tennis aren't they both are played Correct. for sort of six and seven and that sort of thing right. um but tennis you hold server much more than croquet where you can get quickly someone's made three or four hoops in a row right 
um, and matches swing quite quickly. Um, but anyway, I won't talk any more about that because no doubt I've annoyed somebody in the world. <laughs> <clears throat> Not allowed to gamble on croquet, I should say, under WCF regulations. <laughs> if you're a player or an official. But we do have our free to enter fantasy competition. There we go. Which I'm not doing very well in. Oh no? I'm sorry about that. Uh, it's not entirely your fault, Brian. <laughs> um, my number one Egyptian I picked, Amra, got knocked out a bit oh, too man. early. Yeah. I do have Matthew still in my team, though. Oh, that's a good bet. Lovely clearance again. Red really isn't runnable, and he's lost yellow. Yellow's miles away, so he's quite a long way down in this hoop now. Do you think he might take the hoop on from just outside the corner? We'll see where blue ends up, but it's possible. Like you said, yellow is very, very well out of play. Black's dead in front, and if blue does take, position it's quite deep so that might not be good enough that yeah. red might say hey I'll, i can just clear black live to fight another day mm -hmm. i don't need to take on this really aggressive hoop it looks like that's what he's doing The in-off was definitely on there. It was there, it was there. But I think he was he was trying to just hit that dead center and, like you said, live to fight another day. Yeah, if black takes wide position from red, I think yellow should probably shoot at black rather than blue because red's on side. And I'd rather force blue to run a long hoop than have black be able to run it with control right. down to eight. So it's better to take out black. So I, I think either position, either position. or black and let blue have its go. Red's not in a bad position at all. That's a That's really a good shot, nice yeah, shot. Good shot um, and all the Egyptians here are going to take better position with blue. All red can do is clear black to the north boundary. If you take wide position from red with blue, that's your best chance of winning seven with control. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about black getting cleared, because you can still clear yellow. If red doesn't clear black, you've got the cut on yellow south of the lawn, you've got stopping it away, getting your ball in between them, and you've got a snuggle. A snuggle isn't great there. From here, I don't know if he can cut yellow so far down south of boundary. What do you think? Maybe to the halfway mark? Yeah, I was thinking to probably get it about a yard to two yards south of the halfway. Right, and the towards where Matt is standing right now. Um, so lots of choices here. Um, whilst I say that's the Egyptian standard play, I don't think there's anything wrong at all with just clearing yellow. Just say, I'm going to get rid of it. don't really want to run my hoop with red on oh, the side yeah, down no. there, 4-2 down. Yeah, no. I don't think it's strong enough, 4-2 down. 4-2 up, I'm going, nothing wrong with taking a 5-2 right. lead. Of course. Uh, that's what we did. And I think he played that at the pace where he thought there's a chance blue might finish blocking red at black. Okay. And it's just gone a bit too far. Oh, That's a fantastic red. clearance. It's not just his hitting the black, it's because he's flicked off to directly in front of the hoop again. Right. And, you know, from the very weak position that Matthew was in, he knows he's now almost certainly going to get a hoop shot. Right. Fantastic position again. Possibly even wide from yellow, which would be a bonus. Yeah, Matthew's just put his hand in the air acknowledging that. Um... Very good spirit this match has been played in. Yeah. 
and that will be trying to be something that blue can't clear. We know red can clear black. We don't want blue to be able to clear the yellow if you're Matthew. And Robert just looking down, has he got enough room past black to preferably hit the yellow, just like Matthew did on the right hand side, and take that north boundary for himself. No, he's missed that. And this is getting close to the sort of big lead that you want when you need one game to close out a match. Not desperate to win at 13. I just want to cruise through. Oh, in the middle again. Very nice. Very nice. Matthew's feeling good right now. So he's won the last three hoops. He's now in a very powerful position at seven. I think I mentioned earlier we've got three AC World Champions playing today. Yes. And Matthew is an AC runner-up. AC runner-up, yeah. Um, it's that consistency of performance of, you know, at AC, if you, if you fail a two-yard hoop or you fail a hoop, the penalty is so big. And at GC, the penalty is much less. And I think the AC players have that level of consistency right. due to the penalty level. Right. a good question i do that so brian also yeah so okay so allison said um one of our viewers has written in to say are there any other players in the world that swap grip like matthew does he swaps from solomon to irish and yeah. back again yeah. and you've just said you do brian i do i do so very similar to matthew instead of an irish for our touch shots yeah um i do a standard grip Okay. So standard grip is more of my finesse shots when I want to set up and when I just want to hit lightly. But when I want to clear a ball hard, go through a hoop hard, um, I go to my Solomon. Okay. Yeah. Great length again on that hoop seven. Very good. It's gone out, come out to the side, so it's quite a challenging hoop eight from there, but it's got control of the area. Robbie will play in. Looks like it's moving. Has he got the draws? Oof. Ooh. Big opportunity here for Matt. So he wants to take a position straight in front, and that will allow yellow to clear blue to potentially a wild spot. Average, a bit long. So Robbie's prepared to let yellow have a go at the hoop if it wants. sort of defensive shot would be just a clear black. Right. Especially if red and blue are wired. Ah, is it interested in he's looking at the wire. So I think red is clearly open on the hoop and he's trying to hit this fractionally on the left. Oh no, the blue. blue. Now he's gone back to this defensive shot. I, I quite like, I quite like the aggressive shot because he's got a double wire, hasn't he? He's got the hoop, and, and the he's ball. got black. Mm -hmm. So well, again, good. moving both balls off the boundary so that yellow can't be cleared by black. Right. Um, lots of club players would expect a central clearance, keeping yellow near the hoop, but right. it's too weak a position, isn't it? Right. And this is a big pressure shot. You have to hit this in the middle. Yes. You have to keep blue in control of the hoop. It's not easy at this range. No, well, he's no, missed it. Get it. That's just a flick off. And whilst red can't run, this blue in the middle of the north boundary is a bit of a disaster ball. Red will take position and, and black has to clear it straight away. Right.
So it's quite an interesting line of play of not taking position here um, and actually leaving red a little bit on the short boundary side. Um, I, I would have done what Matthew's done and just guaranteed that red can run it. Um, the players aren't always taking position from seven, eight yards away due to the lawn speed. I think making sure you force this clearance is important. Now he's got that one in the middle and he's been very unlucky. Very unlucky to have it bouncing to that ball and make black keep running. So there's a tendency when players of all sports get under pressure to start under hitting. Mm -hmm. We see it a lot on the on the USPGA golf tour and the leader suddenly starts leaving putts short of the hole. Yeah. It's a protective thing. Um, it's the winning line is very, very close now at 5-2 up, 2-1 two, two, up. Ideally, blue would have finished south of yellow there, so yellow can't clear it to a far boundary. Think Trying to it? get the block. Oh, went to the right, maybe. It's fully it's open, far, isn't it? Far, yeah. Oh, that was close to the rush peel. Wow. And Matthew will play the power clearance again. And I think himself and Reg have been the best at this shot during the tournament. I might even give Matthew a slight edge. Yeah. Oh, he's not oh, playing no, it. No, he's, he's playing not. in. Hmm. I, I think he's open as well. That's a surprise. He had a great line, the block there, didn't mm -hmm, he? Perhaps he did. that's he did. why he's fancied that. Um, just coming directly up the blocking line. And he's clearly very close to it because Robert's got on the ground. Now, 5 2 down, you've got the option of stopping red away, mm -hmm. holding position, red playing back in, and then black power clearing yellow up towards us getting over to hoop nine right so that will be one thing that's going through his mind jump is too aggressive at the situation here yeah it is in my opinion it's um it's a long jump he's taking oh, he's he's taking it, it on he looks like he's i'm going to play this stop shot on the red i think i would do that exactly oh. And now, as you mentioned earlier, we've got this sort of roll technique yeah. jump shot uh, from much closer than the 17 yarder we looked at earlier, which was really a poor stroke. Um, good Oof, shot. Great shot, Robert. Again, from 5 to 2 down, that's only 5 3. I don't think he's done enough to put hoop 9 towards his advantage he's going to have to clear this red ball with blue unless red fails to take position so you wouldn't play the the clear right away with black no i'm going to play in um, even with red that close looks like Simply, going for the clear red black's such a long way away if black was at hoop eight I would play two clearances, but with black the extra seven yards away, I think I'm going to play the first ball in, possibly a little bit deeper than red is. Well, that's one go down. And yellow has two options. It can try and play short of red to block the blue at it. And I just like guaranteeing yellows in front as well. I want to force Robbie to hit a sequence of clearances. It's like he might have gone for the block. I think it went too far. It's too far, and it's, it's not really great hoop running position, no. is it? Robbie's going to be well back in this hoop if he can hit this. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, good Got shot. It. Very good shot. So it blacks off the lawn. Um, so effectively, it's an outside agency. Matthew can just lift it up and move it to one side, and um, it will be replaced after Red's played. And once again, I, I like playing closer position and forcing them to keep hitting these seven and eight yarders. Because um, Red isn't guaranteed to run the hoop. Right. After, if my opponent does miss, I like having a shorter hoop than that. And Robbie will be aiming sort of three-quarter ball on the left to move Red towards corner one, taking the south boundary in front of the hoop himself. Whereas if Red were closer to the hoop, it's not that easy for him to hit it and get off the south boundary mm -hmm. from where he is. Right. Well, hit on the wrong side. The wrong side. And this is getting closer and closer for Matthew. He's in a fantastic position in this hoop. Yeah. No need to do anything aggressive like take this hoop on. No. Just keep making Robert chase. Yeah. And he's taking it on. I he's think this is wrong. And that failure there with yellow not being in front means blue doesn't have to clear. So I want to be in hoop running position on the corner side. So yellow's only got the clearance towards that short boundary. Right. So maybe about an eight foot hoop. 20 degrees, 25 degrees. Right. And Rob's clearing yellow. There's nothing wrong with this. It's just a more difficult shot physically. Played That's it well. Shot. Excellent. Shot. And now we're going to see multiple goes at the hoop, aren't we? No real point in red taking position no, with blue being able to clear it. So just take your hoop on. See hoop run hoop at this point. That's good. Great Very shot. Good shot. Now has he got the win match winner? Wow. Is it the match winner? Wow. Oh, oh, my oh, oh, oh. oh my god. Wow. Matthew Essig into the world final. Wow. Spectacular fashion. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> uh, congratulations to wow. both players, both um Played really well and um, spectacular way to win. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. And thank um, you, I think they'll uh, probably move over in a minute or so to the Fulford Bamford match. Yeah. Will you be moving down over there? In the third game. Commentate over there, Chris Clark. What do you think? Uh, so, an update for viewers. I think 3 2 in the third. Reg is 3 2 up, isn't he? Yes, he is. Um, but Robert's got a ball dead in front of hoop six, and Reggie's trying to clear it from... No, no, it'd be a positional shot. So, yeah, still very even at hoop six. Okay, so we're going to switch our chairs around, move the mic, and we're going to give you a bit of commentary and some camera angles on Lawn 4, Bamford and Fulford.
So, Bamford black and blue. 3 2 up in the third. Game all. Bulford red and yellow. Uh, Reg Bamford from South Africa. Robert Fulford from England. Lovely to have four different nationalities in the uh, semi finals, yes, doesn't it, Brown? Yes, how long has it been since that? Well, <laughs> eight, I, eight world championships or something like that? I certainly, yeah. Difficult to remember. The Egyptians have obviously had lots of players in the later stages of GC world championships. Yeah. Um, and there was certainly a stage a while ago that um, England had lots of players in the later stages of AC. Right. Um, so Reg has just applauded Robert's shot with yellow there, which has got between blue and red. And Reg is now going to be jumping, presumably through hoop six, rather than simply to hit the red ball. Oh, yeah, what a very what a flat jump shot, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it was. Uh, Four-two lead. It's just, just so consistent, you know, and why wouldn't he? He practices every day during this week. He's been practicing for at least an hour and a half at the end of each day. Yeah, Rob's been hoping to get some hoop running practice, but unfortunately his wrists just aren't up I to it I did see that, yeah. I saw him finish the day off with the ice around his wrist. Once again, Reg is forced to take this quite tricky clearance. He's got yellow sort of hampering his stance and backswing, and he's got to take it because yellow can just cut blue to corner three. So, yeah. I think normally you would have seen him hit that a lot harder. Yeah. And he just wasn't comfortable with that stance. He was um, too concerned for yellow. Yeah. Um,. So I, don't, I would have thought Yellow could have cut this to corner three. I guess what it's, he's saying is, look, you haven't got a ball in front anymore. So I'll be the first person to get two balls in front. And in order for you to win this hoop, you're either going to end up hitting seven or eight mid-pace, mid-range mid rocades, or you're going to have to run it from corner two or somewhere like that. So I think this time this will be a much firmer stroke from Reg. I think they're close enough to get the double clearance. I, I think it's just on, but it has to be a perfect contact. Straight down. Uh, this isn't too good. He can That's just really right bad. in front of black, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so I think red will effectively snuggle onto black. With black being off the... If black's off the boundary, you probably just mark it. Yeah. And play in front of it. Um, what do you think they are? About 18 inches apart? No, it's closer than that. About a foot. Doesn't look like he's playing it. It looks to me as if Black's not off the boundary and he's clearing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's... Again, if you've been listening for a long time, you'll have said, clear the, heard me say, clear the ball that's just played in before you. Mm -hmm. um, that isn't that. I mean, if he had that straight on clearance at black, I guess he could have just tapped it and hampered his shot, right? And get right behind black. Yeah, yeah. This is just putting distance between black and yellow. And Reggie's going to be actually in quite a good position, worried to hit this long row, okay? Yeah. Um, it's the safest of all the options. It's you know it's 
guaranteed to get distance. Mm -hmm. Nothing worse than playing a snuggle and it's hills a ball to one way and you've just left him a five yarder. Right. Uh, so Rob just taking a nice, safe, cautious option. Yeah. And... You have the opportunity to have your opponent start missing. It's also something good, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. He's looking at it. In the middle. Go, with Rich, in the middle. I was going to say you never know, but we know. <laughs> um, that's one of those things. Rob's taken a safe option. He's gone for distance. Always gives the opponent the chance. Mm -hmm. The perfect snuggle. Your opponent has no shot whatsoever. Right. Um, and if we were watching Essek and um, Robbie Fletcher, I think we could have seen a hoop shot there. Yes. They might have regarded it as a free go. Yeah. Robert, mm, every time, ball back in front, extend the hoop. This is basically through two and a half games, and Matthew's just finished four games. Um, and it's because of Robert's tactics. Robert is just going to extend and extend and extend. That's not good enough. Nope. Just need to hit those, at worst, three-quarter ball, don't you, Brian? That's a surprise to me. I, I don't see anything wrong with two foot straight position there. Reggie's probably going to play either to the boundary or in a sort of mirror image position on the uh, western side of the hoop to red. Yep. My red can't clear black very far then. Is it possible that uh, Robert maybe played that too far on purpose to not make Rich feel like it's in a, you know, dangerous Easy. position and that way maybe you can promote it with yellow, make blue take it on? Thank you, Brown. You've spotted it. Uh, this is a strong play by Rob. I haven't picked it up straight away. It's a deliberate move to leave the yellow a rush mm -hmm. in front of the hoop. Um, so well done. I've... Failed to pick that up straight away. <laughs> Rob's done it deliberately, and it's absolutely spot on tactically. Um, and if Reg picked it up, Reg would be clearing red. Right. Mm, no. I think he cut the wrong side, maybe. Yeah, it's, he wants it in the middle, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He's deliberately played to give him a straight rush in front. Uh, the good thing is, yellow's quite good. Um, it's not clear whether red's jawsable or not from there or not. The last oh, game. Oh no. That's terminal. That's a disaster. Yeah. So Rob's got the nice easy hoop he wanted. 4 2 down. And he'll be wanting this within certainly four yards of hoop eight, won't he? Too hard. That's off the south boundary. You can see that little flap of the left arm. Disappointment. 
Um, the, I suppose the good news for Rob is that it's gone sufficiently wide that the, the wired area would make a tough hoop for Edge. Um, and the last game, Robert won 7 6. Um, that was Reggie's first game he dropped all tournament. Wow. I um, think maybe just the second game that went to the hook for Reg. Quite what well, could be. I mean, if you look at his knockout results, he's he's won like to zero and three and two and <laughs> like um, sixty four net groups. Yeah. Yeah. Just three days ago, he started playing at his best. But this blue looks like it. He can't get directly down to eight. Uh, so he's going to have to play one side or the other, I think. I was talking to Reg earlier during the week, and he told me that he was playing the best croquet he's ever played. Do you think maybe that's just something that a sports psychologist uh, <laughs> tells him to tell everybody no matter what? Uh, I think that's a good point. Reg <laughs> obviously tells himself he's um, going to win every tournament he plays, and I think he's lost about his off. Oh, loss is the wrong word. He's failed to win these last seven or eight. Um, and, you know these neuro-linguistic programmers who tell you to say positive things all the time. I, I just, I'm a realist. I know I miss shots and I know I don't always win, but <laughs> I just try and play the right shot as well as I can each time. Um, so again, thinking about Reggie's sort of mental programming, um, you'll have noticed after he played that um, poor positional shot with the blue last time, he wipes his forehead. Mm -hmm. That's his mental way to get rid of bad shots. Um, can you see it? Yeah, we can see. <laughs> Are they in the way? No, the camera's right in front of them. Ah, oh, right. Okay. okay. So that's fine. Some corner. Yeah. So, very sensibly, Red just played the black in, trying to block yellow at the hoop. And I think we'll see yellow take this hoop on. Um, black and blue have closer control, and there's no guarantee Go if you another. clear the black that, yeah, you're going to get another go. And it's quite straight, this. It's just quite long as well. I noticed that uh, Robert Fulford has changed the uh, wrap on his mallet, or is it a different mallet? No, nope. yeah, the same mallet, um, new sort of hockey grip. So just a sort of roll on, roll off, rubber type grip. The one that you heat, heat on, or put some hot water on or something like that, the grip? I'm not sure. I think I've seen in the past them just sort of roll it on, you know, without too much heat. Um, I was someone who just played with the same grip from day one and just a standard leather grip. So now I think Reg is going to want to try and nudge blue in front of the hoop to block Red's potential hoop. But it looks like he's swinging much firmer than that. Is he actually taking the clearance on here, Bran? It's a long way away. It looks like it. Where's his 10 yards, isn't it? Oh, no. Oh, no. Yellow's bounced there. Okay. That makes much more sense. So, again, he's cleared the ball that's just played before him. And now black and blue have really strong control over this hoop.
So assuming blue doesn't run, Rob does have the time just to clear the black to allow yellow to get back into the hoop. It will involve multiple clearances, yes. but it's probably a higher percentage than taking on this unbelievably difficult hoop he's got. He's going for black. And very much in character. Black will play back in front, and it'll just have allowed himself enough time to get yellow back down. Now, as black here, in an ideal world, you want to play fractionally to the eastern side of the hoop, almost on the same line as blue, so blue can just drift past the black, get the black. to blo block red. And that's... Uh, it's great in terms of it's in front of the hoop, but blue's got a very challenging block now. So perhaps blue can run. Oof. Our awesome. player on lawn five, Mr. Burridge, has told us that yellow has a perfect double. And Rob's carefully moving this ball in. It's, it's strange to be 30 plus yards away and having to carefully move something <laughs> in, isn't it? Um, nothing within 30 yards of you. Um, both these players, five time AC world champions from memory, played so many British Open finals. And I. Uh, very recently, right? Absolutely, the GC, um, but they played a lot of AC Opens finals as well. Um, I think I wrote in my report of that event um, that these two were the, the two great players of our generation. And I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, Rob hasn't played anywhere near as much GC due to family commitments and time, but he's showing that, you know, he's still a fine player at both codes. And one of the beauties of playing in a semi is you know you've got priority. He doesn't have to worry too much about this game that he's on lawn five. They'll wait for him. Could it be a match turner? He's looking at it. No, he doesn't like it. No. And yet we still don't know where blue is. Is blue going to take its hoop on? Looks like it. Enough off his own ball. No, I don't think he'll be <laughs> risking moving that. I think this is just a straightforward hoop, and it's it's far from easy. A lovely shot. 5 3 lead in the third. Game all. traveling isn't it yeah that's gone past the corner Wait. 45 degree line i said earlier this morning probably a, t a two second difference between 10 o'clock and two o'clock mm -hmm. it might even be three mightn't it no. What's been your favourite match of the tournament? That I played myself? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think my favourite match, uh, possibly my very first one. Um, unfortunately, it was uh, with uh, Sharif Dolohab, who has helped me a lot right. in my game. He's the um, pro at the club right next to mine in North Carolina, so we get a chance to play against each other two, three times a week. Um, he, uh, we actually had an exhibition at my club before I made the trip to England, and uh, he 
beat me quite comprehensively in two straight games in front of a hundred of my members. Right. Um, I didn't like that too much, but I played well. He just played very, very, very well. But, um, you know, we came all this way to play each other. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's the problem with um, you representing Mexico. I'm representing Mexico, uh, yes. Normally, you'd get split away from your countrymen. Right. And uh, you're obviously working in America and living in America and yeah. being a pro there. Yeah. Um, but representing Mexico, you, you don't have that country separation. Yeah. So um, him kind of dominating me for the past, you know, six months, um, that was a very good start for me Great. Um, in this World Championship. And the other match that I really enjoyed was one that I did not win, but um, I did um, manage to take one game off of Yasser Syed from the boundary right here on court one. Yeah. That was very nice. Right. Reg taking on the hoop from distance. Again, um, I mentioned earlier that it might be regarded as a free go. I don't think that would be regarded as a free go, would it? Because Red's just got this clearance on blue. Right. Um, so just, a, 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 sorry, Yellow's just got this clearance on blue. Um, just a um, aggressive line of play. Yes. Um, Getting that sixth hoop is always uh, very important. I think yeah. that's what he wanted. I, I think I think that Rob Rob said at lunchtime he felt Reg wasn't taking optimal lines all the time and he was trying to play too many flashy shots. And I play, think we know big. Yeah I, It's difficult, isn't it? Because we both know Reg is playing fantastically well at the moment. Um but was that the percentage line? I guess Rob thinks maybe not, but Oof. I think we've seen why he feels he can take it because he thinks he's just going to hit everything on the lawn. Um, certainly, it's, it wouldn't have been a shot Robert would have played himself no. in that particular position. Um, a lot of people who've watched Rob over the past couple of months have thought, well, actually... He doesn't look very scary. No. And if you watch his entire game, there aren't those, what I've just called flashy shots, those, you know, big power clearances and the, you know, seven, eight, nine yard hoops. Um, and so he sort of grinds you down a bit positionally um, and with his mid pace clearances from seven, eight, nine yards away. And suddenly you find, oh, I've lost. <laughs> Uh, I think a lot of people could learn from that. Robert is playing a lot more balls in, mm -hmm. in neutral positions, than most players in the event. Um, he has just played a weak red. That, you know, that should have been in front of the hoop, shouldn't it? But he's still okay. Wants to clear black, so yellow goes off the lawn on the south boundary. Mm, wrong side. That's interesting because I don't think I don't think he's hit that on the side that he didn't want to hit it on, and we would both normally think the opposite. You know, right. he'd hit it on the right-hand side, take the south boundary. So why does he think that's a better boundary to be on? I can't immediately think of any no, reason. Either. I just, I just think, you know, from three yards away, he doesn't hit the wrong side of the ball. Um, so I'll nudge in front here, and blocking Black's hoop, generating the clearance yellow on blue later, potentially. And perhaps this is what he's doing. He's saying, I think Reggie's playing too aggressively. I think Reggie's going to take the boundary jump. I want him to take the boundary jump. Mm -hmm. And it's my best chance of winning. Could be it. Doesn't look like he's setting up for a jump. 
Self clear. Oh, and his rush yeah. peeled it. Peeled it, through. Peeled it through. And now we're getting wow. close to five all again, mm -hmm. aren't we? Yeah. And once again, showing the benefit of the people who play tight position. You might go, okay, Reg was unlucky. But if you play in front of the hoop enough, you will get lucky. And your opponent will get unlucky. That just shows how many times they've been in these kinds of situations, right? Yeah. So Yellow tries to take position at 10. And I mentioned yesterday in the commentary, you, you have a side you'd prefer to miss on. Mm -hmm. And in that case, you always prefer to be short rather than long. Mm -hmm. And you always prefer to be on the eastern side rather than the western side. So you can clear towards the long boundary. Um, so that's a good miss. He'd prefer it four feet further, but it's fine. This is red shooting, isn't it? No. This is travelling. Looks good. Yeah, round of applause from Tim King, our tournament director. So, Robert wants again position on the eastern side so that yellow can clear blue to a wide spot. Had to sort of poke at that a bit because he had a limited backswing. And if it's. Well, he's definitely left yellow open on blue. But he'd prefer to have been two feet further east there. Clearing. And he's missed. And Rob will fancy his hoop if it's open. There comes a stage in matches where you have to take hoops like this. And yeah. yeah, early on in the block rounds, Rob could have just cleared blue, extended the hoop. But against a player of Reggie's strength, when you've got that level of three yard almost straight hoop, you want to run it. Yes. Crucial miss in match terms. Getting back to five all would have given him every chance to 11. And now he's 6-4 down. And you can't... You can't help but wonder as to, you know, how good he might have been had his wrists have held up longer. I know it's 35 years he's been playing, but, you know, just that lack of ability to practice when he wants to, because he was a massive practicer, Bran. Um, yeah, probably put in at least four times more work than I did. I was actually uh, sharing a video with um, with some of the uh, North Americans there of Robert Fulford playing Mohammed Nazar in Egypt. Yeah. And uh, he used to whip that mallet a lot harder before. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was that kind of swing that probably, you know, injured his wrist. And well, he's a little bit more delicate there. When he went over there to play that Egyptian Open, the Egyptians were still using their own balls mm -hmm. and 
without wanting to be rude it's like hitting a block of concrete mm. and he came back and he said oh it's just impossible my wrists are just you know destroyed um, and a few years later the Egyptians moved to using dorsum balls which obviously helped them when they're playing in open shore shields and world championships that they're now using the same as everybody else Oh, well, that's multiple misses from Reg now, isn't it? Yeah. And you, you know, Rob's favourite to get to hoop 13. Yep. That's good length. Excellent shot. That's very good. You can see a lot of this lawn four has a, a very gentle slope towards the clubhouse. So um, as the camera is looking at it, you know, left to right. And certainly playing up to 13 after 12, you, you really don't want to aim left of the hoop. No. I, I aim probably a ball right of the hoop to try and get to 13 on this lawn. You'll be disappointed with that. That's not a great yellow, is it, really? Patience again. I know, you know some of the young players that have gone, oh, I can just clear red there. Oh, wow, uh, what a shot. That is where you want what the blue shot. ball to be. So, position here, Brian, or clear yellow? Mm. You think yellow can go go through the hoop from there? I do. I think it can get past blue. Mm. We'll probably go for yellow then. If yellow scores and blue stays there, does not have a shot to 13. It looks like he's going for position, though. for yellow another miss so building up these misses now yeah. um that ball is obviously offside um we've got this question mark about if yellow runs how does blue have a shot up to 13 i think it's a little bit western so i think it might have but equally rob might fancy not risking going for the hoop but taking blue half ball trying to maybe jaws yellow mm -hmm. but at worst bouncing into the hoop and staying there oh. and just trying to control the position i think he's hit that on the wrong side it's a nice position for yellow to be um, it's threatening clearing any ball that Reg puts in front and getting up to 30. Remember how far Black is away. Black really isn't in the action at all. Where does Reg dare to go? He wants to be the opposite side of the hoop to yellow. 
and he wants to be preferably wired. But if he goes too close to red, red might just clear it. So Robert's got the position you try and get, the ability to take position with the red ball, with the yellow having a northwards clearance on blue and black miles away. And it's going to be one of those shots that Rob has to decide how hard to hit it, because he's going to want to hit it harder than his comfortable pace. Can Reg get a block in? Oh, it's gone way past, way past. And how hard is he going to hit this? Mid pace, he'll move it about 11 yards away. If he goes full whack and hits it half ball on the left, he can get his yellow almost up to hoop 13. And that was his full whack. Ooh. So great yellow in corner three. But blue's rubbish. <laughs> yeah. Red's red's gone. Yeah. And that's just a wacky shot in my mind. He's left red, an easy clearance on blue to stay within range of the hoop. That was, I, I think he should have hit that two and a half times harder. Good clearance. Hasn't left black the easy clearance that blue just um, gave red. And red will be trying to sneak in front of the hoop here to a position where red can't run the hoop and struggles to clear the black. And that's an easy clearance for the red. But black is in a guaranteed hoop running position. And yellow will just play in again. You need a good positional shot here. Stop. Needs to stop. Nah. And Jenny and myself have this saying, every time you fail to take position... It's the same as missing a seven yarder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one two. So that you're aware. I'm not sure. No. Can he block red at black? No, he hasn't even tried to. Nothing wrong with that, just taking straight position. Mm, he's lost the red. Yeah. Wanted to keep that much closer to hoop 12. And now black can just play. Just playing a ball. 
The only thing you got to be aware of is that double clearance. You don't want to give a double clearance there. You want to make them clear. What's that? Maybe 15 yards, 10 yards. Yeah, Reggie's looking at the yellow at hoop. So it's clearly runnable. Does he want to shoot at yellow? Or does he just want to play another ball in and say, hey, you run that 45 degree hoop or else you're out of this um, second, sorry, third game? Yeah, it looks like he's just playing it. There we go. And I agree with that. Another good shot. Can't clear both of those. And Rob's going to be forced to play a stop shot clearance holding yellow and then hit the black ball with red. Didn't Again, it just rose up that blue a wee bit, didn't it? Yeah. And didn't get that flat contact. So yellow's further away than Rob really wants to be running from. Who plays in, looking for that wire, or just put another ball in front? Yeah, it's another ball in front, and you're trying to block. Um, I think you're trying to block yellow's hoop shot rather than red at black. Okay. Um, uh -oh. See, that, that's gone too far for me. I, I, I just don't think that's an easy enough hoop for blue. Was that a fist saving, as in that was a good shot, or...? I don't know. He seems to be happy. He's, his hands are low enough, it might seem like he wants to jump it. It's going straight. No. Perhaps a partial block there. And certainly expect Reg to run this straight hoop 12 to take a 2-1 lead. Oh my, oh my word, my word. Yeah. Is that, is that it's about four consecutive clearances missed and a what, very four straightforward foot? poop shot there. Four foot straight hoop. Smashed it. But you often smash the hoop shots, doesn't he? So it's not, not out of character at all. And Rob now is in obviously a very weak position, so he'll be taking on his much longer hoop. And now Blue will probably have a go. So Brian and myself are sat by the mic, which is quite a long way away from the action here. So we can't see exactly where the blue, yellow and red and um, black are. And that's all going to make a difference to what Rob's choice of shot is. You know, if uh, yellow's bounced back into position, you'll probably shoot at the black. Um, if black can't run, because blue's in the way, then he might play into position. But this is, uh, yeah, this is clearly Robert's shooting technique. 
So needs to hit the black because it can run Gosh. in the middle as well. well I don't think the crowd have really got into this match. Yes, you know, there's a, only gentle applause. Um, obviously, we have seen quite a lot of missing recently, but um, I think one of the reasons might be uh, these two are very popular players both of them and, and people don't want to take one side it's not really as if you've got england v another country right. reg is sort of an honorary brit they're both um, playing at home and yeah um, a very popular um throughout the world reg so rob's headed off for a comfort break that's what happens when you get to 50 plus. And um, hopefully it's not too long a break for you. Oh, this is a mid pace clearance on yellow, and it's a fabulous effort. It. Yeah. Fabulous effort. I, need to be wired. I think when Robert comes back, he's going to wonder how on earth did that get there? <laughs> As Reg just sort of lifted them up and put them there, so it's probably about as perfect a shot as he could have hit. Yeah, yeah. Reg is looking at it. This is already a five-hour match. It doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> um, Reg is, you know, comparatively slow at both codes. A bit less so at GC than AC. Mm -hmm. And Robert's tactics extend hoops. Um, and, it, you know, he's not actually that fast himself anymore. Mm -hmm. um, Here he comes. Uh, yeah, Rob's back. Oh, well, probably need to find a mallet. Maybe some water. Rehydrate. It's been a gorgeous day, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, you're used to 40 degrees every day, so it's probably a bit <laughs> chilly, but I'm, I'm roasting. Yeah, it's hot. The day I arrived to London, uh, the 18th, though, was when we had those uh, record-breaking uh, temperatures. And, yeah, yeah, sort of 40.3, <laughs> wasn't it, I think? Yeah. Um, and probably 40, 40 degrees in the UK uh, feels a lot hotter than at Mission Hills. Yes. Um, due to humidity and that sort of environment. But I struggle, I have to say. Now it's absolutely fine, 43 degrees in Cairo, but 40 at Mission Hills was a real test. Oh yeah, just so dry. <laughs> I've just been asked um, what time the final is tomorrow, and the answer is no, we don't know at the moment. Um, Matthew is obviously a fairly fast player, um, so... I would guess we'd start at the same time as we did today. We might do. There's obviously the danger that the finals finish by one o'clock then, and anyone who comes to watch in the afternoon doesn't get it. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised to see it start later than 10. Really? Um, Somewhere between 10 and noon. 10 and 12.30, probably. Yeah. Um, One of the things I'd recommended back from 2015 is they actually staggered the semi-finals and started one at maybe 9.30 and the other one at 12.30. Oh, okay. Um, just so, you know, viewers got the chance to watch both. Oh, it's uh, Doosan Rush peeling on lawn five, Ian Burridge through hoot 12 to lose the first, I think.
So Rob's done something vaguely interesting. Um, he said, obviously, I can't hit blue because I'm completely barred from it. I'm going to go to a position where if blue draws is, I can clear it with yellow. And black can't clear me much away from where I've gone. And it's about the best he could do, to be perfectly honest. So that means blue is not running. It means blue is not running. Yeah. I think I might have played yellow to give black a, to give red a rush in front of the hoop. That would be good too. I like that. Um, I think that's stronger than where he's gone. Obviously, if Red runs the hoop, he can't do anything about it anyway, and he's lost. But if Blue Jaws is or sits in front, I think lagging to give Red the rush in front. Um, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess Blackie's just going to clear you. So the best you could probably do is rush it to a wide position from Black. It depends how big the wire from black is on the rush. And certainly, you know, yellow is going to get a clearance if this finishes in the draws. So that can't be bad. Yeah. So if black is sort of side onto the hoop and there isn't a wide area behind yellow's, yellow is in the right place. And um, Rob just has to play in with the red and force the black to clear him. Because obviously any central clearance that sort of runs hoop five is going to move blue quite a long way. I don't think Reggie's going to be comfortable leaving that red ball in front. Medium pace here. I am medium pacing it, yeah, but not not the sort of wibbly one he had earlier, where I said I wanted to hit him two and a half times harder. I want I want to clear red within three yards of the boundary. Yeah, that, that was an attempt at the, the rush appeal. appeal. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. I think that might fall into Rob's flashy description. And this is clearly a situation where power is a massive advantage. Yes. Um, if, you know, you could swap one of the power players in for this shot, you would. You feel, you know, Robert getting this up to hoop six is unlikely. Where's uh, Essex Solomon where you need it right here? Yeah. Ah, oh, super good. shot. Very good. Very good. And he's got it. Two hoop six. Really good. Really good. And now is Reg going to be punished for not clearing that red ball? I think it's very possible here. Every time you shoot at red here, there's that tiny chance of the rush peel, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Look at the signature celebration from Reg. Wow. Wow. Yeah, 2-1 to Reg. Wow. Oof. That could easily have gone another 20 minutes, that game, couldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it There's could have. Plenty more life left in it if that, what was it, 14? It was 15-yard hoop, wasn't it? Yeah. Hadn't have been run. So Rachel is taking a sip of water. Rob's obviously had a wee break. And um, they should be straight on with game four. Yeah, here we go. Right away. Loser of the previous game gets to play first with either of their two balls.
the game three has started and Rob's taken poor position at hoop one. Um, and Alison is just organizing put it on, an interview with our first finalist this year, Matthew Essek. And, and then we'll be getting Jenny Clark in to do a bit of commentary after that. Um, but yeah, I, well, would you, do you fancy having a go with Matthew? Um, yeah, why don't you uh, just spend a couple of minutes with him if you want, and then I'll, I'll come in and I'll swap out for you. Okay. Welcome, Matthew. Hello, Chris. How's it going? Good, thanks. You must be thrilled with that performance this morning. <sighs> very, very, very thrilled. A very exciting way to win. Yes, a little bit of luck, but uh, it's... Uh... It always happens in GC, so uh, happy to take it home. Absolutely, nine and ten in one shot, and uh, you got off to a good start. But Robert came back very strongly at you, didn't he? He did. He did. Um, was very aggressive as well. Um, he had a lot of boundary line shots. Um, he would clear me away. I'd clear him back, and he'd just score the hoop from the boundary. So um, um, it forced me to be aggressive as well. Um, so it's uh, it's always fun playing Robert. He's always gives you his best. Um, great competitor, great player, and um, that's two semifinals in a row now where we've had some pretty good battles. So, um. and talking about tomorrow, you've got one of these two highly experienced competitors. What are your thoughts about these two players, Reg Bamford and Robert Fulford? Um, well, obviously, um, both of them outweigh me strongly as far as experience goes. Um, but it's all about your current form, um, how you're playing at the time of the match. And so, um, I feel really good about how I'm playing right now. And, um, I'm looking forward to whoever wins and, um, having a good final match. So I'm uh, really looking forward to it. And quite a contrast in styles, um, Robert Fulford is very um, positional, and uh, you're much more of a, a hoop runner and a, a clearer. And Reg probably plays a more more balanced game. He's obviously highly skilled positionally, but equally he can be a clearer or a hoop runner as well. He's got a probably an all more all around game and more power than Robert. Um, Reg is obviously just now run hoop twelve from. Hoop 11. Yeah. Um, which one do you think is likely to press forward in game four? Um, I would not be surprised to see Fulford take game four, um, but I'm, I'm expecting Reg to take the match. Okay. Um, I think Jenny and myself, um, Jenny predicted 3-1 to Reg. Okay. And I predicted 3-0, so I've already lost. <laughs> um, but, uh, well, you know, Fulford's game really favors these conditions. It does. Um, they, they've really, the lawns have really sped up in the last few days, and um, they, now it's very difficult to, even as a positional player like himself, it's very difficult to position the balls where you want them to be, um, whether it be touch shots, um, cuddling, um, positional shots, uh, going to the, the first ball to the hoop. It's, it's very difficult to control the pace. It is, it is. And how did you think the lawns change from, let's say, 10 o'clock till 2 o'clock? I was estimating maybe at, at least two seconds different? Yeah, I would say a second and a half to two seconds. Okay. Um, it's, it, they really, really um, change over the course of the day. And obviously the biggest difference is, you know, they were doing that earlier in the week, changing maybe not a second and a half to two seconds um, over the course of the day, but they were getting faster. But now in the morning when you start, it's already at a, at a pretty um, slick, slick pace. And then it gets even faster than that. So, um, you know, it depends on what court you're on. I know the court that they are on, court four. I've played a couple of games there, a couple of matches. And um, it's got some interesting breaks. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so when the lawn's this fast, you have to hit it slow. Yep. And so the ball is going to take all kinds of breaks when it's when it's approaching the hoop and so it's very difficult especially I know that hoop one um, if you're approaching from the peg towards hoop one it breaks about a foot and a half to two feet yep. um, west and so those little things um, can make a huge difference uh, in the match yeah the entire lawn breaks west that's right um, so it does make it that extra bit difficult due to the, the pace um, 
and we played here six weeks ago and the lawns are about you know 10 seconds and it's all very judgeable it's going to go a ball or a ball and a half one way and as it gets faster it's suddenly it's uh, you're talking about over a foot aren't you yeah it's right that's right um it's it's really made things um difficult and especially now you know the hoops have been fairly tough all week as far as you have a lot of shots that are pretty close to the center of the hoop that are just being um they spit it out um and um especially today with new hoop holes it's it really made a difference especially on the the early games um, i noticed in game one and game two for for robert and myself it was um a lot of shots that were just not quite going in um so especially the angles you know the straight on shots are one thing but a slight angle makes a huge difference on uh, your chances to run it does it does Anyway, Matthew, thanks very much for your time. Um, lovely to see you over here and fantastic performance. Thank you. Um, you're obviously in, not as experienced as these others, but you're just showing that you can come along and if you're physically talented, you're going to play fantastic croquet. I think you've been probably the best hoop runner. And what I said earlier was in terms of 10-yard, 8-yard clearances, you have been the best. You've yeah. been in the middle, and it's been wonderful to watch you. Thank um, you. Perhaps while I've got you, you can tell us a little bit more about your swap between your Solomon grip for your sort of hard, shooty type shots yep. and your Irish grip for your positional or more touch shots. Yeah, so um, about a year and a half ago, so as you know, Chris, I, I, um, I'm primarily an AC player. Um, I, I've taken golf croquet up in the last year and a half, two years. And yep. um, when I first started playing golf croquet, all hoop shots I played with Solomon Grip. Uh, and the only thing I played with Irish were, were touch shots, positional shots. Yeah. Um, and maybe, uh, you know, a uh, soft controlled clear sure. uh, here, and, here sure. and there. But yeah. um, what I've found is that my Irish grip is a lot more consistent on hoop shots. Yep. Um, and it allows me to play at more of a AC hoop shot pace. Yep. Um, and there's there's positives of that. One is that, you know, if I miss, um, I'm not going as far away. Exactly. Yep. Um, and it gives me a better chance to, it has a lot more top spin. Um, so it gives me a better chance to not only go through, but if it hits one post nice and solid, it comes back and it spins back into the jaws. Yeah. Um, or, or, you know, in front of the hoop. And so um, it's transformed a lot in the last year and a half. It used to be I had a, a, a gray area at about seven yards. Yeah. Um, and now it's it's about 10 yards. Okay. Um, so it's, it's, it's increased slightly. And so, you know, at 10 yards, uh, 10, 11 yards, I, I really want to start using Solomon. Yeah. Um, and I just trust it a lot more. Um, but with hoop shots, it really doesn't make a difference the distance. I'm going to play at Irish um, most of the time. And it's, I just feel more comfortable shooting at a hoop with Irish grip. And so um, the Solomon is just the clear shot. Um, anything that, that I want to move with a good pace. And then the Irish is just the, the nice, smooth, consistent tempo swing. Um, and so I actually, talking about Fulford, I, that's, that's kind of where um, David Maloof and Robert Fulford are two of the people that I kind of wanted to model my Irish grip swing after. Yep. Um, just their tempo through the ball, um, their last cast and their swing are almost identical. Um, and so that's that's kind of what I'm after. And uh, that's a really important word you've just used there, tempo. Yes. Um, it's one of the things um, Jenny and myself focus on a lot. Um, if you can actually get the tempo right, um, we'd, we're normally looking for a comparatively slow tempo, aren't we? Yep. If you compare us as association players primarily, um, with the Egyptian players, the Egyptian players are moving their mallet through the ball much faster. That's right. Using much more of their lower body, so their wrists. Whereas we are trying to have that smooth tempo using our long levers more from the shoulders. That's right. Um, and one of the things I've been saying is the association players are just that little bit more consistent because we get penalized more for yes. one error. That's right. That's right. As at GC, you move on to the next hoop, out of your mind, not a problem. AC, you sat down for half an hour going, why on earth did I do that? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. It's, uh, it's a much different mindset. Um, one of those big differences that um, AC brings is that you have to be able to hit that one shot. 
Um, and in GC, you can you can have a miss. Um, you can have multiple misses, and um, you have to be able to move on to the next shot very quickly um, because there's no sitting down. There's not yep. those 30 minutes where you're watching somebody else run a break. It's, Absolutely. Um, in you know 15, 20 seconds, you're going to have to hit another shot. And so um, the ability to kind of throw that out of your mind is, is really important in GC. Um, so thanks very much, Matthew. Um, best of luck tomorrow. I'm going to move out of the commentary chair now, and I'm going to leave you with, I'm still going to call him the current world golf croquet champion, Ben <laughs> Rothman. Welcome, Ben. Thanks so much, Chris. Welcome, Ben. Thanks for uh, joining me here. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's an exciting day of croquet. That's exactly right. Had... Um... One semifinal down, and now we're watching game four of um, the, uh, the two experience. Oh, I told, trust me. <laughs> um, saying hey to the camera here. We've just been told we're on camera. Um, we, um, we've got Fulford versus, not only are you worried about making it, but you're thinking about, you know, how far is this ball going to go down? And you decide your pace based on that. And these hoops at an angle have been spitting um, the ball out frequently. And As so, we saw with that blue ball. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And so... Um, I think a lot of times you're just worried about making the best swing to score the hoop, regardless of the pace um, that it that it goes down. Just make the hoop, deal with everything else after, and um, and Robert has done just that. All right. Well, while we're waiting for them to patiently remember the uh, if there's any hill here and shoot around the hoop, uh, I want to ask, uh, how do you feel about your match? Um, Thrilled. Um, I I knew going into the day that I was taking on a, it was a repeat of the the AC Worlds in 2020, the semifinal there, and um, I, I was fortunate enough in in Melbourne to to take Robert in four, and um, and uh, fortunate enough again today to take Robert in four, and and um, he's you know one of the best players in the world. Um, always going to give you a great competition. And, Coming um, a bit of a pattern there, you and him in the semis. That's and right. Four. That's right. And um, he, he's had a little bit of. Uh, as it happens in GC, had a little bit of luck my way in the end, but um, I'm happy to take it any time I can. So um, very I fortunate think, to move on. Think any of those uh, hoop shots from the line that go down anywhere near the next hoop are, are a result of a great stroke. And yes, luck that it, it went in and didn't end up past the hoop. Great clearance by Rob there is going to, again, show that benefit of him making it clean with that angled hoop shot. So he was close enough, no hampered swing, maybe a... 13 yarder there uh, a solid clear and he, he might have even gotten the wire on that cut yeah we actually have a uh, the camera we can see where the camera's at and, and uh from our angle we can see clearly that that reg is wired on yellow um he does not have a clean look at this so we're either going to see him play to the back of the hoop or, or take position it looks like where yellow's at he's just going to take position and um make robert think about it but um maybe put some pressure on that hoop shot for yellow that's right Hoping to sneak by. Curves in early, though. Wow. In the back. Unintentional. I think he, of your two options, he, he agreed with you <laughs> on going to position, but he ended up with the result of the other option. So, again, uh, Reg is kind of having a fortunate miss where, you know, you miss the hoop but come back to position, although for no benefit at hoop one, and here having uh, missed the block but... Uh, missed coming around the hoop to position, but getting the block in the backside. And and as Chris, you know, when Chris was here with me, um, you know, when the ball's moving at this pace, um, because the lawns are so quick right now and so slick, um, when the ball's moving at this pace, any break in the court is going to be um, brought to life. Accentuated. Yeah, accentuated. Um, it really is. And um, it's... One that little, one probably broke, you know, six, eight, six, eight inches there. Right, um, just in the last two feet, really. That's um, right. It, I think one of the things to remember is uh, it comes up in golf a lot as you speed up the greens. But uh, the idea is the longer the ball is traveling,
lost you, but uh, hopefully you saw Rob's excellent angled hoop shot at hoop one after Reg missed one from seven yards. That's right. Um, Rob got clear through the hoop, so he had maybe a 13-yarder down to two. Uh, Reg got positioned immediately, um, followed by the other two balls lagging in, and Robert was able to clear the black ball to the north boundary from the 13 yards, in fact wired from yellow that had position. Uh, Reg tried to lag back, but it, it hilled uh, a good amount, six, eight inches, and instead of coming around to the front side of hoop two, Reg is now stuck in the back of hoop two. Uh, and then we've had, I believe, a position shot and a clear since then. That's right. Yellow played to position, blue cleared it, and now um, Robert has played red to position as well. And so it looks like we have Richard, the um, the referee, coming on to take a look at this. I'm not sure if he's here to watch this or... Um, Manicure the, the holes, Yeah, if there's I, any old holes. I believe he's here to watch it. I think Reg is going to try to play through the hoop to a dead in front position. Um, that's his goal, obviously, but it's hard to tell for us how um, how in front this ball is and how, how difficult of a shot that's going to be. Yeah, so after this, we can probably expect... Uh, Robert clearing blue and possibly a red jump shot. It does not look like Reg got through the non-playing side there. So for those of you uh, unfamiliar with the game, um, Black needs to get all the way past the back plane of the hoop to be allowed to score. It has to score from the side where Richard is currently kneeling to the side where Reg is standing. And so unless Reg's ball gets every bit of ball past the upright plane of the non-playing side of the hoop, then it cannot score, meaning even if Robert knocks black through, it will not count as a point for Reg. That's so right. that would make a, a red jump shot pretty low stakes. He, he's unlikely to give Reg a point here. Um, do you think he's just going to throw both balls in? Yeah, that's my guess, because um, we, we can safely assume that Reg is going to have to clear red uh, with blue. And so I think Robert knows that. And... Um... Oh, he's just taking some relief, I believe. Yes, yeah, yes. So. Oh, so it looks like he, if he's moving he the blue ball, he's going to get clear yeah. that blue. Um, so he's going to take a clearing on blue here and then play, as Ben said, a pretty safe jump shot with um, with red if it's still there. The um, alternative tactic would be having both balls in, but then Reg might be able to get rid of red. Reg could hit partner back to the playing side. Uh, it's possible, depending where yellow landed, Reg might be able to clear both balls and then retain control with black uh, right in front of the hoop on its next shot. That's right. So Robert's taking no chances at Reg pulling off a double clear or anything fancy, and, and he's just going to clear blue and leave Reg a, a long clearance attempt on red um, before Robert might get a jump shot. Uh, and that's a big advantage there. Uh, the jump at the even hoop, when the next ball to play is stuck in that hoop, that will give Rob control of hoop three. So if Red successfully jumped... That and would be a, a big uh, two, possibly a two-point swing, but... That's a big it's, miss, Ben. It's not to be. Yep. Um. All right, so having missed the ball that he moved for the relief, you move both balls uh, if the opponent wants when they're within six yards, but if you miss that less than six-yarder, the ball then is returned. So, yeah, that, that is an unfortunate miss. Sometimes you see that because of the fences nearby the court or the, the boundaries. Uh, it's It's a shot that's not only harder to get your stance right because of the edge of the court, which is why he took relief, but also then even once you take relief and have your stance right, you don't really get much chance of stalking that shot. That's right. There, there, there's, not much, uh, there's not much room there. That's the whole reason you're taking relief in the first place. All and, right. Now, um, normally, uh, there's a little bit of applause there. People thinking Reg wanted to be down to hoop three, but I assure you, if Black can't score, Blue does not benefit by no. being to hoop three. I think Reg meant to center ball that and stick around. Uh, he's still in good position, but if Rob comes back to position, that'll be another clear that Reg will have to do now from 12 yards. That's right. Um, so that is an unfortunate result. Otherwise, uh, if Black could score here, uh, Reg would have fantastic. been trying to get Blue down to three. That's right. And he would have been quite happy with the result. You see him spinning the mallet, a little shake of the head. Uh, wasn't the center ball clear he hoped. Here comes Rob on that slippery court, getting all the way back. If he's in jumpable position, I think he's long. Uh, that would put pressure on Reg. That is a clearable position, though. So that spot being just level with the hoop means if Reg gets to runnable position, Red's going to be able to clear it. Also, if Reg goes to short runnable position, Blue might not be able to clear Red at all. Yes. So, so that, we're that probably going to see a great if, defensive position. That's right. And we're probably going to see Reg... Um, you know, he's he's going to come out of the hoop. We know that um, onto the playing side. But 
we're probably going to see Reg play to um, pass the line that Blue can see Red so that he's he doesn't have to worry about blocking it. It's hard to see from here if Red's runnable. Um, I don't think that it is. It's in a great clearing position, but... I assume it's it's about level with, with the hoop. The okay, is that, it? Uh, um, it? It's possible that it might be where Blue can't even see Red. Okay, and, um, so, and so he's created some space here. He assumes that... Um, Red is either going to play in front or, or clear black once it's Red's turn again, so he wanted to make that clearing just a little bit longer. Um, obviously still runnable, but it looks somewhere between six and seven yards back. Yeah, Red isn't terribly sparing with his applause for his opponent's shots, but uh, in this scenario, he, he would only applaud if he thinks that was one of the perfect positions to put it. So yep. um, the aggressive offensive position would have been where black can't hit you, but Red could jump the hoop if black were to dribble through. Uh, to the playing side, but in this case, it was such a perfect defensive position, Reg couldn't stay close to the hoop at all. Um, and I believe that means that uh, Blue can't hit all of Red, so Reg didn't want to risk needing to clear Red uh, and sticking anywhere within a couple yards of it. So he went three, four yards away, making a, a stop shot more difficult. Yep. All right, so we've got kind of a reset here. We'll see if uh, Robert blocks or clears, which begs the question... Uh, is there anybody you want to say hi to back at your home clubs uh, watching yeah, uh, thanks. back on the East Coast? Thank you. Uh, so I'd love to, to shout out the uh, the Quag Field Club in New York. Uh, that's where I'm currently working in uh, for the summer, and uh, a lot of the members there. Have, How's work today? Um, it's It's been great. Work, cool. here, work right. here was fantastic. Um, and um, a lot of those members are keeping up and, and, and staying on track with how I'm doing, and so um, it's great to hear all the support from uh, – from Long Island and and also the um, the Country Club of Orlando and Interlocking Country Club in in Orlando, um, both of those, the members of those clubs have been very supportive as well. And um, of course, um, I have to shout out my uh, grandmother Becky. Um, she is probably the Baxter the, herself. The Baxter, the Baxter herself. She's definitely my biggest fan. And so um, I heard that uh, you said that she may have adjusted to this time zone so that she wouldn't miss your games in the morning. That's right. That's right. She is uh, she is strictly on the UK time zone, trying to. Uh, trying to uh, catch all the matches and and not just my match has been um uh -oh. she is she's a croquet addict she wants to watch <laughs> any match that is on and um and she's done just that so um, i'm sure she is watching now so hello and um and uh obviously mom dad sister um all the family back home and thanks for all the support and um hopefully i can um take it home tomorrow but um it's uh it's one thing we've had one uh american champion and uh the first ever in 2019 it'd be pretty impressive to have two in a row um so that's the uh that's the goal for tomorrow yeah bring bring the trophy home i have to do what yeah. do what i can all right so we had a little bit of deliberation there we had rob play that real gentle shot on this quick lawn to get i believe a partial block and reg looked at it for a long time i think maybe he wanted to hit uh a jump shot there. Possibly he was looking at center balling red, hoping to follow into the jaws, but he opted for uh, what looked like not a half ball. I'm not sure if it was a missed shot or if he really needed to get that quarter ball clearance to just get red away from the hoop. And that has given Rob a great stop shot opportunity. Fantastic. That medium place, sh medium pace shot that you see more from Rob than Reg, uh, although they both have great stop shots. These are however many tools there are in the toolkit. They have all of them. Yes. So yes. And, and medium pace, firm pace, stop shot. <laughs> yep. That's, yeah, of course she does. I'm, I'm glad she's the Bexter's right. watching. I'm glad to hear that. And uh, we, um, you know, talking about Reg and Rob, I, I think the, the one difference is they're both um, amazing players, very well-rounded all together. But I think Reg really has the full kit, um, everything as far as power, touch, um, tactics. Right, and well, let me, let me ask you then, what? What is the difference then? What what does Reg have in his tool bag that you don't think Rob has uh, shown us this week? So I, I think we've seen when Rob tries to so another good stop shot there, but oh, it might be hampering yellow. That certainly gives Reg a a, a double clearance opportunity. Um, um, but we'll see. Yeah. So to answer your question, uh, Robert has phenomenal tempo uh, when he stays um, when his tempo is good. Um, he center balls. A lot of the time, um, it's when he tries to add a little bit more and uh, get a little bit more power with his wrist. Um, we've seen some of these miss hits that, um, even on you know this clearing that we saw at hoop two, uh, I think he was trying to get a little bit more on that. And 
that's when you're going to see those miss hits where Reg is a lot more comfortable adding pace to his swing um, and staying under control when he does that. And so I think that, you know, Robert's biggest strength is his ability to position the balls. Um, he puts the ball where he wants it to be. And when the lawns are this fast, it allows him to play his mid-pace clearing and still clear you, you know, 7, 10, 11 yards, somewhere in that range. And he, he his ball's not going very far. Um, and so he's able to fight out and battle hoops, um, and he's going to eventually wear you down and position the ball well enough that he puts you in a position where he's he's going to take the hoop. So All right, so this, this shot where Red got great position, though, was on a stop shot. So this was not Rob's chosen spot for Red, which I think is why Reg didn't go for a clear there. There's also the... Uh, the difficulty of trying to clear yellow if you center ball red it's great you might move both yellow and red but yellow might stop shot in the center of red and so had reg hit that center ball on yellow it might have left black and red scattering away and left yellow a perfectly unobstructed hoop shot that's right so it looks like he he opted for the block he didn't get it but he didn't run into the back of the hoop like he had earlier uh so he's he's improved on learning a bit of the uh the hill there uh now in game four He's got the hill around hoop two, but just a little heavy on the pace, and we'll see. This is why he didn't clear. Yeah, Robert it's looks pretty Rob's uncomfortable camper. here. Yeah. Um, he's he's um, rejected this twice, and he's now um, looks like he's deciding to run the hoop, and I think you have to in this case. There's nothing to lose. Um, blue clears red, and red has a seven-yarder, and um, it's not like you're losing a ton of control. And he's oh, run it beautifully. Great, great shot. Great gentle hoop shot. You see the control there. It's an AC shot. Getting a nice, just enough follow through to get through the hoop and get your rush after. Uh, in this case, uh, he didn't have to put extra pace on it to stay accurate through the hoop shot. He knows how to run a hoop gently from those AC world championships, I guess. <laughs> the grapples and shields, you, you name it. He's, yeah, yeah. he's, uh, he's, he's done, done it. it all. All right, so here goes Reg. Now we're up. 2-0. So again, that tough angled hoop shot at 1, and then Reg opting not to clear and failing the block at 2, Robert making the hampered shot. Um, that's also a scenario back at hoop 2 where you might see a player jump their own ball to score a hoop. It was kind of, despite being hampered, despite having blocked yourself and interfered with your own shot, it's still worth it to go for the tougher hoop shot. Um, because otherwise you're going to have a reset with multiple clearances before you see the front side of the hoop again. That's right. So what do we see here? We've got Rob is okay with Reg's angle at three, so he's just gone deep behind. Either he's okay leaving Reg there, or he's, he's just happy with one clearance attempt. He's not going to try to pre-clear that blue ball. Yeah, and, and based on what we've seen Robert do this week, we might not even see him clear the blue ball. He might just... Um... Played a tight position. Obviously, with the hoops running, or excuse me, the court running this fast, he um, it's going to be very difficult to position in exactly where he wants it. But um, you know, if he's if he gives Reg something to think about up front, then um, it might change Reg's chances to score. Just put an extra little thought in the back of his mind. And we'll see. We had that at hoop twelve in the last game, where uh, an uncharacteristic, maybe five foot miss uh, from Reg. And trying to really put some pace on that shot so maybe robert uh, sees that ball the same angle the same distance you know maybe put some pressure on reg here by not going for the clear and up up two nil in this game he can maybe afford it so long as he doesn't think reg is going to run that all the way down to four that's right and yeah. he's done just that all right um, so with black failing position as well it takes away some of the pressure uh theoretically black could have been blocking blue but i don't think that was the case i think they both just underhit it. Uh, one of the things I noticed here, uh, playing on Lawn 5, you may you may have noticed on Lawn 4, it's a it's slight uphill. So as fast as it is, going from 2 to 3 here, going to the east, it's a slight uphill, which can be very misleading, because as soon as you get the speed of these very quick and nice lawns, uh, it, it's quite deceiving when all of a sudden your lag shot comes up well short, which both black and yellow had in that case. Odd, normally the first shot would come up short, the second one would adjust. In this case, both of them on their second shot. They adjusted, but maybe over-adjusted. That's a great shot. Um, it, it's hard to really explain how difficult it is to jaws the ball this week. Um, the hoops have really, if you catch any stanchion at all, that's not right in the middle. It just throws it to the side. And um, 
some of us relied on uh, when the hoops were older they might get a little bit of a run in there a little bare spot that you could maybe hope that it would slow down even if it bounced off the stanchion but not today these are brand new hoop settings on all these courts i believe yeah that's right and so that is a very difficult shot from more than two feet rob plays a bouncing jump at barnes wallace and the crowd thinks he's made it but sadly uh, while it was quite a nice bounce at just the right height to not promote reg through he's bounced off to the east um that would have been a big shot for a three nil lead that reminds me of uh, muhammad kamal uh, shout out to the palm springs pasadena resident um rob has a similar jump shot where from maybe only 12 to 14 feet for you would that be a bounce jump um on these lawns no um they're, they're so hard um that you know the the ball really jumps off the ground and so um at that distance, I'm just going to play it in the air. Uh, All right, yeah. No bounces. Uh, Robert Fulford's remind me of uh, of Kimo shooting those shots where it seems like too short to bounce, uh, even on the, the lush lawns at Mission Hills, and he hits those bouncing jumps from 12, 15 feet. It's quite a shock because I don't think I can make the ball bounce that short of a distance. Yeah. Um, and Rob got great height on that, just a little off to the left. Uh, it might have even been in the middle of the hoop, but again, you touch any bit of these stanchions, that's why the jawsing was so impressive, because any bit of these stanchions, they reject it. Um, uh, an analogy I like to use is if you've, you've played on a, a, like a standard NBA collegiate hoop, it bends a little when you hit it. You know, you see when players dunk, the, the rim comes down a couple inches and springs back. But if you play on the playground, that thing is just hard, solid metal. That's right. And the difference when you miss a shot and hit the rim in a, a professional level hoop, uh, in basketball at least, uh, the rim moves, and so the ball, the rebounds come closer to the basket. You see the big men play in the playground. You shoot that three, and you hit the back rim, it comes back to the three-point line. That's what these hoops are playing like. If uh, you hit any so bit of stanchion, it can come way back. I'm going to interrupt you real fast, Ben. We're going to get to see some of the uh, AC prowess here, it looks like. I think he's playing something like a three-quarter roll, um, trying to take a position down at hoop four. They must be touching. Uh, right. I think even if they weren't, he's played wide enough to the right of black that, um, that he could play the shot. Um, right. You know, because the ball split far enough apart immediately that his mallet's not going to hit it that second time. I almost don't think he would have minded if that was lined up to promote blue through. He, if that had drawn black in and promoted blue through, he would have been happy because it wouldn't have promoted blue through by much. That's and right. It might have left Reg more hampered than he is now. Uh, of course, with Reg not through, he has the option of not scoring because Robert now would have great control of hoop four, albeit not position to run the hoop, but good control. Uh, and and now, he's done that, but did, Ben, did you see that ball fall backwards after he, he struck it? So it looks like he's tapped the ball back to try and make sure that, that well Robert couldn't see the uh, the back of the hoop. And um, it actually fell back into the same spot it came from. So I think Robert's going to play at the left side of the ball here in the uh, back of the hoop. Um, yeah, if he had liked the position, the, the new rules allow you to deem, whereas the old rules you would have had to hit it in some way, uh, even if that way was technically a fault by tapping the ball. Yeah, you know, with sustained contact from the top. The new rules allow you to actually deem. So if Reg had been happy with that position, he could have passed or deemed and just said his turn is over. The fact that he tried to move it at all means he didn't love its position. It fell back, gave Rob a chance to clear. Um, I don't know if the clearance would have really prolonged this hoop much. Had he knocked blue to the north boundary, Reg still would have had great control of this hoop, if not position to run it easily. Absolutely. Absolutely. And... and um, you know, I think we're going to see Robert is a very patient player. Um, I think we're going to see Robert play to halfway here and, um, and just move on, take, take the, um, take the point given up here and then play for hoop four and, yeah. um, Reg, you know, one good shot through the jaws of three into a uh, position at four could not only give him the, the hoop run at three, but also give him control to try and tie this at two, two. Yeah, that was the big benefit of red, uh, trying to hit blue out of the hoop was to, to protect hoop four really. Um, hitting, if red had hit blue and gone off to the west side, it still might have cost Robert uh, hoop three. But in this case, Reg is likely to be in control of hoop four. You'll see a little positional battle here with black uh, almost right on the halfway line. Robert has to be careful. If he's any bit north of black, black can clear yellow to the north boundary. If he were any west of black, black could clear yellow all the way to the west boundary, both very far from hoop four. So you see Robert play uh, not in the center to block blue progressing down to four, but off to the east side so that black just can't clear yellow very far. That's right. So it's uh, Reg getting the, the halfway position first 
kept Robert from actually blocking blue in any way. We'll All see right. if black blocked. Ooh, unfortunate wow, self block. I think it's actually going to help him here, Ben. So <laughs> oh, that ball was long. That ball was long. Um, the clip on black, and that's why we see Reg apologize to Robert there. It, it, it looks like blue is long. Um, it has shaved the distance off and put blue in perfect position at, uh, at hoop four. Um, a little bit of, um, a little bit of luck going his way, but it happens in every game. Oh, oh hard luck hits Robert twice in a row. That is, that is rough. Again, with, with these lawns playing so quick, uh, a good player is uh, like Robert or Reg is, is happy to aim a, a foot on either side of the peg from that distance and be confident. But sometimes at this pace, if there's any bit of hill, uh, and I don't think you practice lagging to hoop four from corner two too often. So he probably didn't know that hill was there. Uh, and, and it's left him stuck in the middle of the lawn uh, off sides to hoop five if hoop four ends up getting scored as well. So that that could cost Robert. So again, a lot of his efforts recently had been to protect hoop four. He did the roll shot down to hoop four. Uh, he tried to knock blue out of the jaws of three, even though it was unlikely to give him control of hoop three. Uh, and all that was to avoid Reg having control of two hoops in a row. Uh, so Reg has come back from down two nil to get control of three, getting the jaws with a great shot, and now control of four with two balls in position. Robert's more than 10 yards away with both balls. Uh, this is it's, conceivably, uh, if this were shot. Reg, yeah, this this would be a hoop shot. It's possible it's, Robert it's... will also feel desperate enough to, to go for the hero shot. Let's see. Oh, He's got it. Great shot. Great shot. When when your opponent pushes oh. you into a corner, it's, it's like backing a cat into a corner. You just, you're only left with, you know, one instinct, and that instinct is to go for it all. So the hero shot there, Reg may have gotten two balls in position, but he did not block Robert's hoop shot. Just a great shot, uh, reminiscent of hoop 12 uh, with Reg running 12 from 15 yards. We see Robert forced into a tough position just going for the gusto. Yes. And that's, um... Who needs luck when you have that third shot? Two bad luck shots in a row and just a amazing 15-yard angled hoop shot to keep the lead. 3-1. He's up two points here so reg has decided to put uh the red on the east boundary and um that looks short that might have red going a little bit more downhill so it might even quicken up the speed but mm -hmm. uh the fact that reg has shorted that shot maybe maybe not maybe it's a little lush there all right so thank you everybody uh, it's been fun commentating i'm gonna introduce here i believe a nine-time gc national champion uh including seven consecutive doubles titles in america with many different partners sharif abdulwahab so thank you thanks so much ben all right let's welcome sharif in here and uh right. he's going to join me for the uh around hoop five here and uh He's waving hello to the camera and what is my beer first man? Uh, well we, we we've got to find sharif a beer first that i uh that'll be a first i can tell you that much hey everybody uh Well, uh, to start with, uh, big, huge, not over yet. Not over yet. Yeah. So I've got three more wins to yeah, go. Yeah, absolutely. So congrats, Matt. Thank for, you. Uh, Thank reaching you, the final. Yep. And um, uh, we expected nothing less than uh, the championship. So it's going to be amazing. Yeah. And um, I actually mentioned this um, when Chris Clark was on and um, two people that have been a really big part of um, my tactics in GC. I think that's one of the things that's taken the longest time to really grow for me is obviously I, I've, I've always had a, a pretty good swing on the ball, um, the ability to, to shoot hoops or clear balls. But um, Sharif and Danny Honeycutt are, are the two 
people that have really improved my tactics over the over the last two years. Um, you know, Danny, Danny and Sharif are both uh, have different ways of explaining what I did wrong. You know, Danny will say, "Hey, I think you need to do this differently," and Sharif will say, "Hey, what were you thinking there?" You know, <laughs> and so he's he's a lot more honest with me, and it's 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 nice to have somebody that's willing to to share um, his wealth of knowledge over the years of playing and. Um, um, in the States and, and 18 national championships obviously speak for themselves. So, Thanks, um, man. of course, it means a lot. Uh, I'm a little bit tough on you, but, uh, you know, you're uh, just, uh, uh, natural, you know, uh, all the talent in the world. And, uh, I'm expecting good thing uh, out of you, not Thank just you. in uh, JCAC, of course, America yeah. rules. This guy is a monster. He's 23 years old and, uh, just, uh, uh, future legend. So. I appreciate uh, that, Sharif. Great, great start, great start. That's your first one, right? That's your first uh, world champion. That's right. Yeah. So um, this is my first GC World Championship. Um, I've played two AC World Championships. One in 2016, um, where I um, I was brand new. Well, I don't want to say brand new into AC. I just played in. What a little baby. Yeah, it's very young. <laughs> um, I yeah. was um, 17 years old, something like that, and um, it was, I just played in my first Solomon Trophy and. Um, I, I believe I lost in the first round of the knockout to Pete Trimmer, um, and and uh, and then I played in the the next one was in 2020 in Melbourne um, where I lost to Reg in the final. So um, I'm really excited to get into the GC side of things. It's 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 a whole different mindset. Um, it's you know the, the AC you, you ramp yourself up for that one shot and and once you hit it you still got to run a break. But that's you know that's the part you're prepared for. It's the it's the hit ins that really are or the hit and miss. Are you hitting them that day? Or are you not? And then in GC, it's, um, you have the ability to miss some shots here and there, but it, it's all about your, how you respond. You right. know, it's once, totally a different game. I mean, you take a hundred shot over here in AC, <laughs> maybe you miss one and you're out of the, of the, of the game. But, uh, 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 anyway, so last world champion, it was held over here and uh, Ben Rothman won this, uh, uh, I think 2019. That's right, 2019 here in Southwick. Uh, ben Ben took down Muhammad Karim right. um, in five games, and so um, I, I believe, and Sharif, you, you'll definitely know this uh, for a fact. I believe this will be the first final um, in the history of the um, the Golf Group K World Championship where there's not an Egyptian that's um, that's in the final. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's true. It's, well. it's it's a very interesting. Uh, it's in a very interesting year. Let's put it that way. This right. year has been dominated by the um, actually the AC players. I believe the the four players in the semifinal were the the highest rated AC players coming into the event. So um, it's it's funny how the these lawns favor the controlled clearings and the the controlled hoop shots. And um, it's it's been um, it's been a fun ride. So. It's amazing. I mean, I didn't think about it, but you, Robert Fletcher, Rich Bamford, and uh, Fulford. I mean, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, to all uh, AC players, come on down. That's right. <laughs> Join the GC side of things. Right, uh, right. And 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 Sharif, you can speak on this. I, th I think one of the first things that I said to Sharif when he asked me to play GC was that um, there's no tactics. I think that was one of the first things I said. <laughs> right, there's no right, tactics in right. GC. I don't want to play GC. Well, right. um, the, the thing about GC is. Oh, oh, he right. almost pulled the uh, uh, Matthew Asik. <laughs> he almost put two. He's put not two as good. He's not as good, you know. But <laughs> the big, the peg in the way anyway. So, um, <laughs> but but um, what was I saying before? The, th uh, the score now is three-two to Robert. That's right. And Ridge is uh, Ridge is coming back strong. Uh, so, uh, who's your favorite here to win? Um, I, uh, I or think... are you looking for someone in particular? I... You know, I, I'd be happy to, it'd be a pleasure to play either one of these players. They're right. both so experienced and, and so talented. And um, obviously, Fulford is, um, as I mentioned before, Reg, Reg has dominated the, um, or been a dominating figure in the GC world now for two decades. And um, Fulford is um, one of, if not the best AC players of all time. And, and um, you know, to play either one of them would be a, an honor, but um, I'm expecting to see Reg win in five. That's my prediction. Um, mm -hmm. I, I expect Fulford to win this game and then see Reg take the fifth. Um, but um, you know how predictions go. Um, they never seem to go your way. And so right. we'll see how it plays out. Reg could easily take the fourth here and, and uh, we could see a rematch of the, um, the AC 2020 World Finals. That's so. what I'm looking for. But yeah, it's not over yet. And uh, Robert is... Uh, uh, 
incredible talent so uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a battle over here that's happening right now that's right us. and if there's anything we know both of these players they've been in multiple um high pressure intense situations where right. um, the stakes are extremely high so um obviously you know it's only human nature to feel pressure but um these guys have been here they've done this and so um it's just who's gonna who's gonna make more shots and so um that's why we're here that's why we're commentating is to is to see what happens and so um looks like what do we have here so red just plays a good ball with blue um yeah, that's uh... Uh, I don't know why is he coming that short. Robert usually. Uh, I think he right was right on the, right on the money. That's nah, right. I think he, he was did, scared he of. No. Nah. Okay. He did. He did not want to be, because Ridge very easily can block this yellow or can clear yellow and score with the blue. Yeah. Or uh, now, uh, Red is out of position. So. I think he was worried about possibly a stop shot clearing stop from shot. black, but um, yeah. and, and as you know, Sharif, how fast these lawns are, I think he was trying to be a little bit closer, of course, yes, yeah. but um, he didn't want to make the mistake of getting too close. Right. And, and Reg has actually opted here, Sharif, for, to not um, to not play the block on yellow or to clear yellow. He's just taken uh, he's double loading the hoop. He's taken right, two right, two right. position balls and. Against most people, it's 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 a great tactic. But against a guy like Robert, who's going to center ball clear you most of the time, um, I, I'm no, not sure. Your ticket. You, you know, this is totally the opposite. One eighty degrees from your match with Robert Forford. You guys are just uh, flying. Everything is just going super going aggressive. Super aggressive. Super super aggressive, and it uh, worked for your style. It worked for Robert Fletcher's style. Uh, by the way, congrats to him. He's just, uh, he's a an beast. amazing, amazing player, but, uh, you know, he met his match. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's, you know, he's, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things you can say about players um, yeah. as far as their, their skill level, their, their, um, their ability to play on the court. But the, the thing that I love the most about Robert Fletcher is he is an absolute class act always. Um, and you can ask anybody in the croquet world and they're going to tell you that exact thing. Absolutely. So, um, Congrats to Robert on, on a great tournament. I think he really turned his form around from the block. You know, every, every, he was one of the favorites coming in, and um, he struggled to, to sneak out of the block play. And then once he got into the knockout, he really turned it on. Wow. And um, and so it's it's nice to see him playing well. And um, I'm uh, I'm happy he didn't play too well today, <laughs> um, of course. But no, uh, he played fantastic. But you played uh, as well or even better to win this uh, in three one. So congrats. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, it's in the best. If, best world champion it used to be dominated by Egyptians but I think uh, now with the AC players coming in and uh, understanding the game even better it's just uh, let's see what Robert gonna do here he's gonna try to jump I guess um is that what he's doing it's hard to see we're, we're, we're actually blocked I know the camera is showing you a much better angle than we've got but we're we're blocked by Reg's uh Reg's right. back here and so yeah. Um, it's hard to see exactly what Robert's going to do, but um, yeah. I'm assuming he can't clear black anywhere, but, you know, a, a quarter ball clearing. And so he would, red, black would come right back into position. Red would be on this north boundary. And so um, he's is, assuming is, he's going to have is, no is control. It, is he jumping? And that's a very difficult shot. Yeah, he's tried to jump. He's tried to no, jump it. No. And, it, you know, there's a couple of things to take away from that. One is that um, he knows that yellow's on sides. Um, yeah. Had he made it, he's stealing the hoop when Reg has control. Um if he misses it, red scores with black, and then yellow plays um, a nice controlled shot to win back, and and um, it's it's three all with you know he has control over it at hoop seven. So um, I don't mind the play. I, it's hard to tell, like we said from from our angle, what he could see of black and, and what he could do to it. Right. Um, but uh, I, I don't mind the decision at all. Yeah. So how you find the condition over here overall? Um. It depends on the court, and, and that's the, that's the thing that's been so in, interesting is that you know if, if you're on a court that uh, let's say you know court one, court two, and um, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those two those two are, are fairly flat. Um, yeah. They're fairly true. You're getting the same same role uh, all the way through. Court two was uh, had, uh, it had like some Robin breaks. Hoop two and ah, mm. uh, thank you, thank you, Allison. Uh, thank you for everything that you do. Yeah, by the way, Allison mom is just. She's a beast. She is. <laughs> That's right. That's right. She's running things incredibly well, and uh, I I am positive that everybody's watching right now. Appreciate everything that she did. So 
There's a it, there's a lot more. Um, I think this has been said before, but it's it it, it can be said a hundred times. There's a lot more going on behind the scenes than yeah. than yeah. what yeah. you can yeah. see yeah. on the camera. Yeah. Um, you know, she she's done a lot of work, early mornings, late nights, and um, the amount of work put in just to um, just to make this happen has been unbelievable. <laughs> Get him a beer. So, <laughs> no, I'm good. Thank you, Alison. Um, Thank you. So yeah, so now uh, Reg, one more time, he's checking the the hoop because. Uh, he tried uh, a few shots before and the ball bounced out and uh, he just wanted to make sure that uh, and I can see from here in this uh, right extension I think it's high a little bit on the ground so do you think Shrink, there's a possibility he's going to try and do something other than scoring the hoop here yeah he could get in the jaws forcing forcing yellow to Yellow clears blue, blue, red blue, clears black. He comes back, you know, he did this in hoop three and was very successful and bit off. Yep. Right? Uh, Robert stole that hoop four with a great shot with the yellow. That's right. So now he does not need to run this hoop. You know, you run this hoop is... Uh, I know Robert Fletcher or you, you will run the hoop and just live another day. But uh, Reg is very calculated and... Uh, yeah, it's it's it's... You're absolutely right. The, the the two semifinals today were two completely different styles. Absolutely different um, style, yeah. And so this is, you wouldn't have seen this in the other semifinal. Mm. Um, no, it's it's a lot nope. more common to just nope. score the hoop, trust you're going to be able to clear from from where you are, and and maintain control that way. And um, Reg is looking for, you know, obviously the jaws and taking a chance that Red won't yeah, clear. Yeah, um, jaws. He wants. Yeah, it's just you know as as I mentioned before, he, he's we, taking control. Of he's the trying game. to take control, um, but sometimes when you're trying to take control, um, you can get a little bit too cute, right. and um, and this game could take a massive turn if if Fulford was somehow able to um, to manage steal, to steal, steal this hoop. Yeah. So um, obviously not a disagreeing with the decision. It's just an interesting yeah. um, tactic that's that's used in in this semifinal that 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 was not used in in our semifinal, um, and and. Um, it just depends on the two players you have, and yeah, t totally different contrast between the four of you. That's right. You, and know, you and Robert are very super aggressive, and Ridge and uh, Fulford very calculated. So we'll see. And uh, also, I want to mention that uh, we have Richard and Richard out there right now uh, as the referee is doing some work, and um, I, there's no way I could possibly remember everybody's name, but. Um, we have to thank the referees for the work they've done this week. All and, volunteers um, here, just incredible. All the volunteers. Richard, Richard, uh, Ian, Francis, uh, Martin. Clive. Um, Clive, uh, you're, you're, Jonathan, you're, um, you name it. There's been so many people that have made this possible. Uh, absolutely. And, and, uh, um, the manager. Uh, uh, Mike Towns, Mike, Mike uh, Tim. Towns, um, yeah, there, there's so many people that are, that are making this happen. So right. um, thank you to all those people for, for making this possible. Right. And Reg has played into the jaws. It's hard yeah, to tell yeah. how deep it is. Um, I'm sure Red can see at least some of it. Um, right, yeah, sure. But <laughs> here we go. Um, yeah, I'm he getting a replacement. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, I think, uh, uh, this is the right shot. And I think, um, I believe Robert Fulford has taken a little, little, um, little uh, break. Relief. And, um, yeah, that's your second time to take it in between uh, hoops he just left the court uh, in the last game at hoop 12 now they're just at hoop six and he's i hope he's fine yeah i think he's okay um i we'll hope it's okay. just uh he is coming again. there he is coming up and um he's um gonna assume we're gonna he's gonna try to play a center ball clearing on blue here and then uh hope yeah. that red can do something with black and and try to steal this hoop but um yeah, well, it's uh, not easy for Red to clear. These hoops, I find out uh, that if you try to clear from the back, it's uh, not the easiest one. It's got to be really, really perfect. You, you, had, you had an incredible one at hoop, uh, hoop three. three. That's yeah. right. And then he one made one. the hoop from the boundary. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he did that a, a lot more times than just once. Uh, um, I actually hit it from the side. I mean, from hoop two, all the way, 21 yarder clearance outside of the hoop was incredible then he turns he, around he, and he makes a seven yard shot then the jaws again then then he goes to the halfway and you clear them well, that was that was incredible shot yeah yeah, yeah. um there, see i remember that's right that's right <laughs> i appreciate that 
And yeah. as you said, blue, blue plays back. And, and even if red does hit this, when when black exactly, comes back, exactly. red still has control. Um, right. So that's the right tactics, in my opinion. Yeah. Right. Yep. So now he lit in that. Uh, but you know, barring a, you know, we could possibly see an incredible shot here where red clears black and not only clears it, but might sneak through the back of the hoop as well and take position. Um, yeah, I won't bet on that. Not likely. No, no, no. I understand that, but um, there's always a possibility. As so. long as he doesn't clear double here. Uh, red yeah, that's right. Uh, firm control of that hoop. And also the flip side here, if he misses, right? He's a long way from hoop seven. Yeah, and. And as tough as these uh, these courts are right now to set up, especially from distance. Okay, and now I bet that. you that he's not going to score. He's going to try to play the... Um... Yeah, <sighs> why not? But just leave it in the jaws again and uh, put the pressure on Robert to take another shot. He misses, he have two balls in the halfway. So we'll see. Yeah, the only the only thing I don't... So I really like scoring here, personally. Um, mm. You already have red in a place that's very difficult to place uh, into position. Um, you can score black into yellow's path to prevent it from getting in perfect position. Um, and then and then not only that, um, yellow could take the right side of blue um, and, and, and be on sides, you know, and be be a little bit closer to hoop seven. So uh, uh, you'll come back for a rush. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, there is, a, the, the, okay, lots of people, like when you said in the first time we met, like croquet is a dumb game. I mean, golf croquet is really no tactics, no strategy, but there is... It's very rich, so there's, we'll, we'll see there's what so what it, Ridge is gonna do. But I, mm, I want to so it on on him to just put himself inside the hoop a little bit and uh, go through. Yep. All right, Matt. All right. Congrats, Thanks, Steven's Sharif. over here. All right. So okay. now uh, Stephen Muller is gonna join me here, and uh, happy to uh, have Stephen join me and uh, get to watch the rest of this match here. Yep, Matthew. Well, first thing to say is very well done on your win against Robert Fletcher earlier today. Thank you very much. Do you think you're going to get a chance to have a second go at Reg in a World Championship final? <sighs> There's a very strong possibility. Um, he's uh, he's playing really well right now, and um, you know it's it's he's having a um, having a pretty good tactical battle, and and we're going to see um, Reg play a half ball. Um, Half ball score on black and try to try to get behind uh, hoop seven as well. Yeah, this is a classic oppor opportunity to do what the Egyptians call turning the corner. Yeah, that looks pretty useful to me. Uh, it's, it's not gone quite far enough, but it gives um, a, Oh, it's just behind the hoop. Oh, oh no. wow. well, that's a, that's, that's an a, amazing a, shot. Yeah, um, that could be a bit of a match winner. Um, not only is it in front, it's so close in front. He can hope to drift down pretty accurately to eight. To go from two three down to five three up would be pretty remarkable. Yeah and quick turn of events. A very big hill for Robert to climb. That's right. And um I believe he's I believe the Reg has opted to leave Red where it's at. Um as would I. It's Red's in a um all the way on the south boundary south of Hoop One. Yeah, there's a one rule on these courts. If you can get a wide position, take it. That's right. Um the opportunities for your opponent to go through a hoop from long range and then hit you are so vanishingly small, given the hoops are rock hard. And whereas I've seen on more conventional playing conditions, it's quite, well, he actually probably tried it, but he just missed on the east. And so Reg is now able to probably play black down to it looks like, halfway. Yeah, it looks like Steven, there's a possibility he might, he's looking at red as if he might play uh, half ball. I can't see where black is because of the board, but there's a possibility of a um, half ball on right yeah, of exactly. red. And then get down to, to eight, eight first anyway. anyway. Um, no, he's opting just for position at seven. Um, no, no, he's just giving himself an insurance policy. He's put black. Pretty well dead straight position, two yards back. Just cope with the possibility that Robert might actually clear blue. Yeah, and you know, obviously position, um, like you said, is an insurance policy here, but um, is there any thought in the back of Reg's mind there when he's placing this ball that he wants to make sure the black ball has a, has a line to hoop eight? He doesn't want it to be straight behind, uh, right. maybe slightly east, slightly west of center line. Well, I'm not sure at this range you can really guarantee that, but you're absolutely right if you can play straight down. But frankly, if you're getting into, I actually always prefer, to, if I can, to play down to the close side, the sort of side nearest the wrong boundary. 
uh, so that you're on the side where you can hit the opponent away into open open court. Yep. And this could be a really big clearance. Obviously, um, there'll be a huge cheer if he gets this. That's right. Twenty-three yards or so. Blue ball didn't miss, miss by much. Wow. And uh, as close as that blue ball is to the hoop, it looked like yellow has um, gone right between the two. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. So this is a shot which you thought should be fairly easy, but when you're So as Stephen mentioned, not only is he trying to um, to score hoop seven, of course, but um, he's really, really focusing on the pace yeah. here, trying to make sure he maintains control that, of eight. Um, I'm afraid he hasn't got your touch. He hasn't managed to run two hoops. <laughs> well, I can thank Lady Luck for that one, Steve. Oh, yeah. um, we were trying to work out afterwards what the frequency of running two hoops in one is, and Ian Lyons for Chesson is one in 20 or 30, and um, the others have said, you must be joking. <laughs> one in 100 or two, 200. That's more, that's more accurate in my opinion. Um, it's, it's so rare you see it. You know, you might see it you know, every now and then in a, yeah. in a practice match or something like that, but especially in a tournament, it's... Um, I can... well, the reason simply is that unless you're absolutely murdering it down there, um, there are usually slopes which will take, take a ball offline. That's right. And Robert's managed to put Red into a pretty respectable position. I... Th get the impression it's although it's maybe slightly to the east of the seven eight line it's probably open to black which actually went off a little bit to the side so I blew yeah black. there's one thing I remember about this lawn I, I played um, my quarterfinal match um, against uh, Mo Karam on this on this lawn and yep. um, if you're approaching on the straight line between seven and eight um, it stays fairly true, but um, if if you're towards the eastern part of the lawn, you know, let's say you're near the peg, it yeah. breaks about two feet to the west of the side of the lawn, western side of the lawn, um, and it's pretty considerable, especially today with how slick these lawns are. If you, if you're playing a shot at the correct pace, it's yeah. going to take that break. Yeah. And so. Um, but it does see that's now yellow is gone. Well, either that was a brilliant block, or it was simply, I'm afraid, an overhead shot, and you can see it turning quite significantly to the west as it slowed down. That's right. And it looks like Red has a hoop shot here, so um, I assume we're going to see Reg either clear Red or play for a block, maybe? If you can see Red, I would imagine he'd, he'd prefer that. Um, he's... Like Black does, does have a hoop, hoop shot itself. So he's opted for the uh, the clear on yellow. That's um, well. There must be a good reason for that. Maybe Black's further back than we think, but I don't think Robert's got any choice here. And I think, oh, maybe he feels that Black is into is interfering from where we're sitting, which is basically well to the north of corner two. It's hard to gauge. Yeah. Um, I've just taken a step over to take a look, and, and Robert does have a hoop shot, so yeah. I think he's going to take this one on here, and um, this could, um, with where Reg was positioned at hoop seven, if, if Robert could steal eight here. I think Reg was doing probably good. Well, no, Blue hasn't actually got any but terribly useful. No, uh, you know, instead of clearing red there, he's opted for the clear on yellow. And, and uh, but I'm afraid Robert has failed that, hitting the inside of the right, the right wire, and... Maybe Rich was taking a calculated risk. That's right. And we can very well see 5-3 here with um, with control and um, yep. possibility in the match-winning game. And Rich fails as well. He does. This is... I, mean, I have... Memories, I mean, my career goes back to the 70s when watered lawns were simply unknown apart from the Hurlingham Club in London. Okay. And then playing AC, I mean, a four ball break all the way around to four back, it was often treated as something that you can almost greet like a really difficult triple peel or even a sextuple peel today. Um, and when I was 
learning the trade, so to speak, and going to, I came here in August 1976, and Hoop One was full of uh, rolls, and the hoops were on humps, and it was one of the two drought years in the 70s, okay. and everything was lightning fast. And I had the the strange experience of playing a friendly one one ball game, and running penalt hoop hoop eleven down to the middle of the south boundary, and obviously used my continuation stroke to drift into position north of Rover or hoop twelve, except it went up a little slope, as it went past the hoop, turned round and rolled straight back down through the hoop. <laughs> and my opponent of the time said quite reasonably. That was outrageous. It's what you could could do then. Um, these courts are now much flatter than that, but they are of a speed which is reminiscent of those times. And it's not something that we see all that often. No, it's and I think Stephen and I had a conversation earlier today, and and these conditions remind me a lot of. Um, I played at the Solomon Trophy and and uh, at Surbiton in, um, I believe it was twenty eighteen, um, and there was. You and I actually had a match that I, I will never forget, and um, halfway through our match, it was game three. Um, it started pouring down rain, and you had, you had done a TPO on me, um, and I was for four back and box. And the lawns were so difficult that even though you were giving me a contact lead, you were so confident that there was no way um, I could muster up some kind of three-hoop run from um, the lead that you had set. Um, as a great shot by Fulford as he plays a, a combo. And yes, that's... Takes the control away from Reg, um, but um, but it, it, it's those lawns were so fast. I think um, they were running it somewhere around a fifteen, um, yeah. and, and before it rained, and there were no triples on the um, on the sheet. And then that night, it absolutely poured all night. And you looked at the next day, you looked at the stat sheet, and there was triples galore all the way down the list because the lawns had just um, became trivial, um, become trivial, and. Um, it's it's funny how just a, a slight change in pace can can not only make it easier, but the confidence of the player just really changes. Absolutely. No, I think um, up to, until about 1990, the cricket pitch lawns at the Hurlingham Club, which they used for the Open Championship to bring the number of courts available up from 6 to 10, were notorious for being much more difficult than the front lawns. Hurlingham's front lawns, are basically based on silt and that makes it very difficult to get very firm hoops because the ground is so friable and moves so much when the when a hoop is hit. In those days they hadn't done a huge amount of improvement um, on the cricket pitch turf and when hoops were hammered into it they were solid and they would actually make them one eighth rather than one sixteenth which was then the standard championship tolerance. It made no difference, and you could see people's confidence leak away as they bounced off the first hoop, and then they realised they were going to have a huge problem getting getting through. <laughs> I must admit, playing early today up on court nine against Yui Elibo, uh, we took about 20 minutes over hoop one, and I wondered how long the match was going to take. <laughs> um, and luckily, things did get a little, little, little bit better, but um, the, literally, the ball was just pinging off the off the hoops. If you just caught it any wire at all, you were just ejected. And, and, and like you say, it's 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 amazing. Just um, they, they've they've reset all the courts this morning, um, and it's amazing the difference it makes when these hoops are freshly set in this firm ground right now, and um, yeah. the difference between. I can't reiterate enough how the difference between you know 10 a.m. when these matches started to now, the yeah. pace has increased you know a second and a half, two seconds, maybe two and a half seconds. It's it, it's remarkable how much faster they get throughout the course of the um, day. It makes the game more challenging. I'd say more satisfying because the players have to be observed. They have to realise what is happening. They've got to throttle back on their approach shots, and you've also got to look very carefully at the ground. Um, quite unsurprisingly, there are patches of these courts which are much faster than other ones. And you could have hours of fun, as they say, trying to negotiate a particularly slippery bit of court. That's right. When just, as I say, one erg of energy too much, and the ball doesn't stop in front, it goes two feet past. And the difference between being on the playing side of a hoop and the non-playing side is absolutely huge. Uh, and this is why I say, if people can get wires, it's such a powerful tactic. That's right. 
and that's that that that's the thing you know on 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 um on easier lawns the the wires are more frequent um because it's easier to place the ball but yes. if you're able to get a wired spot in the on the course today it's it's really either um a, a tad bit of luck or just a really really impressive well, shot uh, um it's one I of the two find it, uh, not, I actually find the players do do sure. adapt I think they find harder to cope with unless they've actually seen it happen are the impact of, of the slopes that's right and um, you know it's I would think one of the great tests of a player's re re resolve is not to become upset or depressed when they get a bad role or even worse their opponent gets gets a good role that's right um, you see a, a player shot turn away in disgust and they get some fantastic outcome I know a lot of players find it very difficult to cope with that yes I find the best answer is just just to laugh <laughs> that's right <laughs> And remember the times when I've had outrageous luck working in my favour. It always comes back around, as they say. Yes, I'm quite sure that if you could s summarise or keep a table of all the strokes of good and bad luck that you've had and you total them up over your career, the balance will be 50-50. Yep. Well, red is now... We've now got blue and yellow pretty tight to the hoop red has now come in and is sitting about a yard or two north of eight perhaps a bit to the east red is not very far away with black yeah, i'll have to decide what to do about yellow it's hard to tell what um yellow can see blocked. um come back to i think black it, like i said it's hard to tell so I'm sure you as the viewers have a much better view than we do because the camera has a um, a much much closer eye than, than we have here north of um, corner two. But I think black has a clearing on yellow with the possibility of um, getting a wire. Um, I believe he's going to go for the left half of the ball, maybe left quarter. Um, and obviously not only clearing yellow to the boundary, but you know progressing himself towards hoop nine if, if he does get the wire. And that's curious. Um, he seemed to drive yellow into the western up upright that's right and that i got the impression the black followed through and hit the same upright so both balls disappeared into corner four and one that's right it was almost like a full roll from the from the stanchion yes. um yeah. it was a very interesting result but um from where robert is standing i i, I don't know how close blue is um to the hoop but i think there's a possibility he, can, he might just see half a ball here yeah exactly no, no, not easy at all Well, he's moved it, he's flipped it off the wire, I think. Um, now, I would imagine it can do a fairly easy stop shot clearance on red, which is only about three feet from it, and yellow is in the third corner. So, um, I think Rob's going to have two balls at least 25 yards from the hoop. That's right. This, this shot. Unless, of course, and I can't tell, there's a wire involved. And I don't think there's a wire, Stephen. I, I think that... Um... What Red's debating here is, um, what Reg is debating, excuse me, is that um, if he does play a stop shot on Red, I do not think he's going to maintain position. No, no chance at all. Um, and that's the only sort of saving grace for Robert. That's right. So, so he's not at all worried about. Um, he's going to take Red all the way off the lawn here. No, he's actually opted for the um, controlled clearing of Red, maintaining blue, blue close to the hoop. Three yards east and certainly a bit south of eight. So currently eight is. Defending its its honor well. And That's right. Threatening to run it. Red just had the one good chance, which he was obviously quite surprised to to fail. And where is but the black it, it has been Fascinating. This this week, watching some of the very finest shots in the in the world. So I walk up to quite short hoops, and then look utterly baffled. <laughs> the ball's just bounced straight back, and 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 uh, you know this is this is very. Um, I had a uh, situation at the commentary booth in in Melbourne, in Australia, and um, after I had actually um, taken Robert down in the semifinals in in 2020, and um, the um, the hoops here, not only when you miss does it miss, but it spits it 
way way um yeah. and it, it's not you don't have any close misses um and, you know they don't they don't settle into the jaws or or just kind of sit right in front of the hoop and so when you do miss and, and as you mentioned some of the, these best shots in the world um not only are they missing but they're missing far away from the, the current hoop that yeah. they're playing and so momentum s switches really quickly that's right yeah um, no hoops over till it's over i mean i can remember some of the egyptians certainly taking african hoops in new zealand and at least initially trying to bully them and finding out that was a very good way to clear yourself to the to the far, far, far side of the court. That's right. Um, and this is what makes croquet of both, both forms much more interesting when the, when the hoops are not easy to, to run. I mean, it's just a sad fact of life that since 1990, in the UK at least, uh, not only do we have a usually fairly dry, uh, sorry, damp summer, but also um, a lot of clubs are now using automatic watering. Mm -hmm. This means that the opportunity to play in these sorts of conditions is really quite rare. That's right. Indeed, um, one of my two clubs I'm a member of is Guildford and Godalming, and they've been famous really for many years for having very dry courts because they're on a slight plateau, the water pressure is low, and they haven't been able to do a great deal of watering. But they're now planning, I think, to get in a large water tank, which I'm sure they'll use sparingly, because their courts are, they've got four courts, four usually very good courts, but they can provide conditions for AC in particular, <coughs> which you don't find in many other places. And, and, and AC is, is it's, it's so much more important to yeah. have the, um, the types of conditions that Stephen is mentioning, because... Um, you know, in, in, in GC, you're going to have longer hoop shots. You're going to have longer clearings. But in, in AC, you want that, um, you know, three-yard roll-up to be anything but trivial. Um, you want your players to have to think about that. One of my, I mean, I think one of the most enjoyable championships I can ever remember, though I ended up being on the wrong end of the, uh, the final, was the, 20, the 2008 World Championship at Christchurch. And that was conditions like these, but... The hoop, but the but the courts, which have been under drought conditions for six weeks, had a huge amount of character to them, shall we say? I mean, plenty of slopes. I was playing Aaron Westerby in the semi-final, and we had this following somewhat ludicrous situation where I was trying to play a play a break and got as far as two back on a particular court and played what I thought was a very gentle little drive to get position for the hoop, and it was, except that the croquet ball had no intention of stopping moving and just sailed straight off the south boundary. <laughs> so I retired to my chair, somewhat baffled by this. And Aaron had a had a lift that I just run one back and sorted the balls out and duly came to run to approach two two back himself. And he'd seen what had happened, so he was and he played an even more delicate shot. And the same thing came to him. Once the croquet ball got into motion, it wasn't a stop. You know, for about another three, three yards after the boundary. So he just looked equally baffled, and um, not quite sure what I did to make sure I didn't go off the court next time. But maybe it, a takeoff, <laughs> properly. <yes. laughs> and um, and in similar conditions at Christchurch, I remember watching with admiration as Toby Garris won the the NZ Open by refusing to get involved with these difficult approaches. He would just leave the, the, the pioneer well away from, from the boundary, just bang through and just pick up a six yard roquet every single time. <laughs> he didn't miss once and he was approaching from all sorts of places, but he didn't mind. He just wasn't going to risk any croquet stroke which might put a ball over the boundary. It worked. That's one place I, I've I've heard multiple stories about is uh, Christchurch mm. in New Zealand. That um, it's 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 a must do. Um, it's it's a place I've really wanted to go. Um, every story is different, um, but but every story is is the same in the fact that it's um, the conditions are just so difficult. Um, well, that actually was a very spectacular try from Reg from a, 
from the west boundary, or just inside the west boundary, he tried to run eight and has got his, I'm afraid, just deserts. He's winged off the eastern upright and gone probably south of um, nine. So Robert can now at least hope that if he puts yellow in front from four yards range, which he has done perfectly. Yeah, it's um, a great shot. He might actually get back to four all. There's a possibility um, here, and, it's, and that didn't look likely when, when Reg was sitting all, in the front of Hoop, uh, Hoop um, 7 here. But as you said, rightly said, in this game, in under these conditions, with very pingy hoops, you can get the momentum changing very fast. Anyway, this is a 14-yarder for Reg. He's been very good at these all all day, so I'll be slightly surprised if Yellow survives. And it doesn't. Great shot. Um, must be very wearing for the opponent when you realise that the only safe distance for your ball is probably about 50 yards. <laughs> and that's not legal on these courts. So. <laughs> Uh, he's, um, you know, he's the, the true representation of the full kit um, yes, yes. all the way through. He's got every part of the game. Um, and, you know, there might be some days where he's a little bit off in one part of his game. But um, when he's at top form, as he is, has been this week, um, he, he is truly an unbelievable player. Um, and then you have, obviously, Robert Fulford, who is the positional mastermind. Um, he's, he's been putting the ball wherever he wants it. And even in conditions like this, um, you'll get the, the here and there, um, mispositioned ball, but he has really done an incredible job of putting the ball where it needs to be. Um, so looks like Robert's taking a look at what Reg has here and, um, he has, um, It looks like he is taking a look at, at what he can clear and what he can do here. And um, he has placed yellow um, to the eastern side of the center line of Hubei. And um, we actually cannot see where the blue ball is, but we know it's on the western boundary. And um, we'll see what Reg does with blue. Might expect this was blue at blue at red. Yep, not particularly hard. Both balls go to um, halfway across the court, so red is almost by the end of a ball, because we AC players would note, and blue is about three yards away from five. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting thing that uh, Chris Clark brought to my attention. He was the first person I talked to when they brought me over here, Stephen. And the four players in the semifinal were the four highest rated AC players in the event. Um, so I just found that an interesting um, um, realization. It is, it is but I, I think it's very much a function of the conditions. Um, I think that all four of you are extremely competent stroke, stroke makers, and that's needed in both games but these are games where the ability to run a hoop hard from from eight or nine yards which people like the Egyptians specialize in simply isn't helpful today because you know, unless you're absolutely spot on you're going to be bouncing off that's right um, and I've had the pleasure of watching the Egyptians play in Cairo which you know it's very hot, dry conditions, but there the, they irrigate the lawns con constantly. And they're by no means wet, but um, and they have hoops with two-foot carrots. But nonetheless, their game is based on the fact that if you hit a ball pretty well straight at a hoop from a range of 10 yards, it will go through most of the time. Um, and I think it's the statistic I find even more interesting is not that the fact that people who are very good AC players have made it to the final four, it's the fact that no Egyptian has. This is the first time in the history of the World Championship there is no Egyptian in the final. And the fact there's no Egyptian in the semi-final is frankly even more extraordinary. That's right. Um, so I would actually be very hesitant to draw too many conclusions. Um, because these are unusual conditions. Okay, so it looks like Reg is playing some form of jump shot here. This looks like this a very severe over. angle. 
Uh, what he was doing, yes, yellow had blocked blue on red, so he jumped yellow to hit, um, to hit red. So I think you've been given the two semi-finders that are changing seats. So, so Robert's going to take my place here, and um, thank you for your time, and um, oh, Robert Fletcher will be joining very, you with Stephen. Good luck tomorrow, whoever you, you have to play. Thank you very much, Stephen. It's a great pleasure to welcome Australia's finest player, Robert Fletcher, who should be very pleased with his play this week, and he can accept with equanimity the distinct <laughs> amount of luck that Matthew had to run both eight and nine to finish their match off today. We're working out the odds are probably about one in 100 to 200 of that happening. So, uh, Yes, yeah. uh, pleasure to be with you, Stephen. It's, um... Yes, I didn't know the odds off the top of my head, but I uh, thought they'd be long. No, we had a discussion after, just after it had happened, and one of my distinguished English colleagues suggested the odds were one in 20 to 30, and the other person talking to him and myself both said, you must be mad. And it's nothing like that. You see them, it's, it happens so in, infrequently. Um, you've got to not only come out of the first two dead straight, but the court's got to allow you to stay straight, and that doesn't seem to happen very often. I'd love to know whether his ball actually did stay straight all the way or came out and then got a bit of a curve. Uh, by all reports, it was, it was pretty straight. Fair enough. It was pretty yeah. straight, yeah. Okay, um, exit from uh, from nine was uh, a pretty straight line. Yeah. yeah. So, so you know, asking Matthew when I joined him whether he thought he was going to be playing a rematch against Reg, albeit at the other code. Mm -hmm. from 2020. Yes, it'll be a rematch of the uh, AC uh, yeah. World Finals. Oh. I mean, this this hoop eight could take forever. The trouble yeah, well, with the with corner the... hoops is when the players are both clearing, it's quite difficult to see how the hoop's going to be scored unless someone takes it on from a long range and Reg has tried that once and bounced off to near nine yeah and even then you're looking at uh, probably eight or nine shots in between uh, each yeah. of those opportunities An opportunity to get into the jaws here, I think. Yeah. Trouble is, you've got to be absolutely dead weight. Any extra motion and the ball just bounces off the, off the Yeah. Upward. But that looks actually pretty well wedged. So Red is going to have to clear that from behind. Well, um, no, he's side on with... Uh, he's, he's about level with, um, with uh, eight there at the moment. Well, black's in a good position to clear, but it in its turn is liable to be cleared by red, isn't it? Indeed, indeed. Can't quite see the angle of um, of blue on black, but uh, he may be able to uh, nudge black towards the south boundary. It's obviously sticking out further than we thought, and yellow has been very firmly dejected. So it, it looked from here that as if it was actually in the middle, which was a fantastic out outcome, but it clearly wasn't. Mm -hmm. Let's put Reg back in a strong position here. Black nearby. Pretty much covering uh, most of the nice places to be for Red. Yep. Where would you put red now? 
I would have put it, yeah, we're kind of where Roberts just put it now, kind of between the, the hoop and the boundary. Um, I might have urged slightly more on the uh, the boundary side. Anything? This shows the huge importance of always being able to be cleared only towards the short side. Indeed. Yeah, particularly important when um, you know, uh, blue and black are well in control of the hoop, um, both are nearby. So you have to make sure you're on that that um, that short boundary side if you're going to have any chance of getting back in into this hoop. No, that yellow is just, it's so quick there. The last time Robert got it right in front, it, you'd thought the wall was falling well short, but it just drifted on. This time it has stopped a bit short. Yeah. And blue will no doubt attempt to send it south while taking some sort of position itself so forcing red to use up its shot to get rid of blue which might then give black a chance to get in front with noble that close yeah and it's, it's got to be careful here not to end up directly behind the hoop Ooh. well he almost but that was deliberate he almost nudged black into very good position but i suspect that robert has no great problems in moving black yeah, might, might be enough there that um, when Robert does clear uh, black with red, um, it's going to end up south of the hoop. Yeah, and that's the trouble. This is the inside game um, when you're just basically forcing your opponent to move you, and as a result, they get into a wireable position. Yeah. Well, he actually, mm, interesting. Well, he's got rid of black. He, in turn, is now on the east side of blue so if blue wants to clear him that's no problem um black now has got a test of it of Reg's touch to see if he can get it into such a good position that yellow has to deal with black it's actually all about Brett's here. This is almost the art of war at its best. You don't necessarily have to, to run a hoop, you can just threaten to do so, and that can then influence what your opponent does. That looks That's a pretty really extraordinary shot, shot from Reg from probably 20 yards. That looks to be about a foot north and perhaps a little bit to the east of Hoop 8. Stolen all that pegs. Yes, um, as you're alluding to before, uh, if you're not quite, uh, if your touch isn't quite as good as Reg's, um, you don't have to get quite that close. And you can just get into a like threat. A serious fire. miss from Robert. Yes. Yeah, there's off the east boundary without colliding with, with anything. But um, yeah, even if you just get into uh, a threatening position, threatening yeah. to run the hoop, then you're you're forcing your opponent to, uh, at this level anyway, uh, to have to remove you. The other With thing the you can always ball. do, which the Egyptians are very fond of, um, they don't mind just having two balls in position going perfectly well. You can only clear one of them. If you've only got one ball nearby, um, you're in a weak position because you're going to have to clear from 20 or 30 yards, even 20 or 25, five yards. Yeah, okay. uh, so, so what Yeah, good opportunity. No, he, it does look as though he is uh, going to be clearing red and can he get close to nine as well? He should, should be able to. Yeah, it's a great yeah. shot. Yeah. So Yep, he's got blue probably only five five yards to the west of the line between nine and ten and on the south boundary. So should be able to command the hoops. Robert now has a must hit from probably 23 or 24 yards yeah even if he didn't end up winning this hoop uh, this is certainly a shot that uh, he'd be wanting to hit yeah, yeah he's got it. enough even reg must have been praying that one was going to going, going to miss Indeed. otherwise the rest of us will be having dinner when they're still <laughs> out there
They've been going now for the fat part of seven hours. Yes, and the, the quandary here is, um, you know, where does red put, put black? Because if yellow comes in nicely, yeah, uh, red is just going to dispatch black to the far boundary. So as you suggest, Robert is just bringing yellow in, hoping this time he can get it. Still going, still like going, still going, it's, still yeah, going. It's a nice shot. It looks pretty, pretty, yeah. pretty good. I mean, certainly in normal conditions, that would be regarded as a straightforward two-yard thrash through. Trouble is, as we know, that may not be enough. So blue is now probably they're going to take out yellow. No, no, we're just not playing coming yeah. in, so how is Red with... He's going for the block. Trying for the block. Very close. Blue could be in play here. That's the best we can do. Anything here is going to go into the shed, isn't it? Well, it has unfortunately missed again. Yep, that shouldn't be a problem, would it? Yeah, if there's any difference between the two players, it's probably that on the balance, Reg has been the more reliable shot. And that is always likely to be the determining factor. Slightly hampered, taking great care of the stance, but bangs it through this time. So he's gone from 3 4 down to 5 3 up. Red is sent back to the West Penalty spot. Robert now has a distinct hill to climb. Begins by ascending what looks like quite a deep yellow. That's yeah. not so Maybe not, maybe it's two yards south, but it looks a very good length. It's a good position at stroke. Um, yeah, it's uh, always a pivotal hoop, number nine. Yep. Which goes for it immediately and misses. Because if you can run it uh, with control up to 10, then um, you're just looking at a bunch of uh, you know, eight to 10 yarders yep. to uh, compete at um, 11. Yep. yep. Well, the Egyptians have this view that if you run f 8 to lead 5-3, um, oh, that looks, a, that looks like the red is right in front of yellow, which will not be helpful. You know, yeah. The Egyptians believe if you're ahead 5, you run 8 to lead 5-3, don't have control at 9, you're behind. Mm -hmm. And they make this slightly exotic statement by saying that you're, you won't be first to 9, and the player will probably cover whatever he puts there. He'll then make 9 up to 10 and win 10. You take position 11. He has the first clearance opportunity from the north boundary, mm -hmm. 12, 12 yards at most. Bang you down to the south boundary near corner corner 1, and then runs um, 11 down to down to 12. Now, Reg has actually missed, missed twice now, which is a bit of a, a turn-up for the, for, the, for the books. I must admit, I personally would prefer to be 5-3 up than 5-3 down at any stage of the game. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah. 
I think. And when the conditions are difficult, the chances of necessarily getting through nine all the way up to ten are not as high as they would be normally. Yes, that's true. Against the wrong opponent, though, who's very good. Um, yes, 5-3 five, five, can turn into 5 all, uh, or 6-5 very quickly. Yep. yep. Well, when we... It does, it does require um, expert um, execution, though. Yes, Red has done Robert no favours at all, so he's now thinking about how he can best cope with the problem. And I have a feeling there's no way he can get yellow into position which blocks the shot by blue at red. Yeah, he's just moved it about a foot or so south and east of red, but... Couple of good clearances here, and uh, Reg will be back in on the hook. Yep. <coughs> and extraordinarily, that counts as the third miss on the trot because I think Red has been actually. It's been tickled a bit. It's come nearer the hoop. Ah, oh, so he's now thinking in terms of a block, I think. He's obviously no, he, he can't run the hoop. Yeah, Red has moved red just enough, just past the uh, playing side. Yeah. So the faintest tickle, really, which seven yards is a bit of a miss. Yeah. But well, Robert's now put red in the way between black on the boundary and yellow in hoop running position but um if he's if it, they're dead straight in line that's actually quite a vulnerable position for a double double clearance if however robert's played it said there's a half ball position that's a lot trickier well um stephen i think he may have uh, i know it's a bit far for either of us to tell for sure, but I think he may have just played it red into position and ignored the block altogether um, for the exact reason that you were um, saying that uh, you know, if he's going to kind of take position well, and put in a block, hmm. the likelihood of a double clearance um, is, is quite high. So I think he might just be uh, banking on... Um, uh, the, the 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 longer clearance for for blue, and coming in with the with the yellow for perhaps a block on um, uh, between blue and red. Right, depends where he where he ends up. Because yeah, blue is not enormously far by red's standards, about twelve yards from red. So unless yellow can block it. Very gentle shot from Reg. Hmm. How interesting. Yeah. So I thought there must have been a, a block then. It had to be the preferred option. Or, or, or um, Reds. Um, We're still blocking yellow. Still blocking yellow for running the hoop. No, it clearly oh, no. wasn't. Red okay. was Roberts. So not to do anything clever, just simply get this hoop. It's not from far away. What three feet? Um, He's almost in further, two I minds, think. isn't he? Bit further. He might be four or five feet. Now, did I see right that he actually played yellow into into red? Mm. Yeah, so Just... obviously couldn't run the hoop with 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 yellow. It looks like he's tried to play red into um, a kind of well, closer to the hoop and blocking, blocking uh, yeah. with black blocking um, blue shot at red. Um. 
red does miss. He may have seen a, a slight whisker of red, but he didn't get it, so... This hoop has been characterised by red for once, looking human, and missing almost everything. Yeah, so if you're going to be 5-3 down, it's the ideal distance you want to be running 9 from. Yep. Um, he has managed to keep that within yeah. fairly close range of 10, but there is a wiring spot available about somewhere on the southwesterly line from the from the hoop. And yellow, of course, may not have an easy path up. So black comes in about three and a half, four yards south, pretty straight. Obviously had to play quite a way to the side. So quite some distance from the from the hoop. Yeah, just making sure that he uh because we're we're back on a boundary hoop. So yep. he's just making sure that he gets to the short boundary. Blue comes in if certainly hasn't blocked any, anything. Now blue can be cleared by yellow, so one possibility is just to put the block in and see if Rage tries tries a jump. You can't do anything to yellow that's that's useful. I hope the jump misses. Yeah, he's got a he's got a good line, so um, should have a fair area to uh, to sit on to kind of block black from a hoop run. So his intent has he succeeded? Like uh, Rich is jumping. Yep. No, it's not put a clip on, so I'm suspecting he missed the hoop completely. Mm -hmm. So the clapping was a little bit. Uh, it did look a very low, sh low, low shot. So. It did. <laughs> Now this is Robert, um, this is a situation the Egyptians love when they're clearing a ball to the far side and trying to come close to it. Hello, um, that would suggest... Uh, oh, no, no, no. Reg's Reg lack, of, lack of reaction, lacking of putting a clip on, was the, and the scorer knew what he was doing, so it is 6-4, but Robert's put yellow right in, right in front. Now his ability to jump dead, dead straight is incredibly... Powerful. This place control clearance, which moves yellow away from any hoop running position. Uh, interested to see what Reg does here, because um, yellow can just dispatch. Uh, yeah, yellow can dispatch anger. anything that mm. goes close. Is he going to go for the hoop? Do you think for a spectacular finish? <laughs> Looks a bit like it. Well, if he's got a double target. Yeah. Well, that's not really done too much good. Reds off the south boundary. Yellow can now take useful position and Robert still has hopes.
that yellow is straight enough he can hope to run down to 12 and then all be on loop 13's lottery Hit it quite on the centre, so he blues off the north boundary, a little way from the action. And now here, Robert can take position and then block blue at red by yellow. He could be in business. First step, get red in front. Oh, red should bring black in here, shouldn't he? Just put it somewhere yeah. north, north of red. Yeah, either um, you know, force Robert to clear it, or um, uh, you know, if Robert doesn't get the block on red from blue. Um, I come out with Robert here. I'd definitely be sort of blocking. Come on, May. I'm just I need to to force the issue a bit. That actually is a fairly short, short yeah. so that's not threatening anything. So I think Robert can just play the play the block with a very easy conscience. Nope, he's just simply bonked black black away. Maybe it was more runnable than it looked. It certainly looked a fairly flat shot. Now this is presumably again it must be, it should be control clearance. He doesn't want to go winging off to the south boundary again. Wow. But how good heavens above. He's rushed red into the jaws and followed through with blue um, which actually offers the entertaining possibility of yellow hitting if black can't do anything about this i don't see what what black can yellow can do an interesting sort of promotion Bombard almost. And possibly leave blue trapped in the hoop. Well, yes, red appears to be absolutely in the middle of the hoop, and blue very close behind, so I don't think there's any possibility of blue jump, jumping red. And it looks as though red is just deemed perfectly happy with, with the situation. Black is on the west boundary. There's not, nothing you can think can sensibly do, except possibly... Yeah, there aren't very many nice options. No, they're not. I mean, it's very hard to see what can be done because. Um, well, you can you can just play halfway. That's or, probably the most sensible thing. Yeah. Or, depending how adventurous you feel, you could play black onto blue. And just nudge. Yeah. Red. Through. Just just change the, the parity around almost. Uh -huh. So give up the hoop, at least free up black, free up blue. Yeah, and kind of hamper um, Red's next shot, which is what he's done. Yep. Yeah. Well, so it's That's... now six six five to to Reg, and Yellow has the first shot to twelve. 
at least he's got blue away from the hoop, which must be a plus. It's a pretty good effort from Robert to... No, it's yeah, taken no, a lot of hill, but it's still uh, runnable. Yep. And looks like it may be in the perfect position. Peg might be in play for uh, black or blue. Is this Reg trying to finish it off with a 14 yard hoop? He was trying to finish it off, but he's just missed. Straightens up in dismay. Yeah, so Robert is going to take the opportunity with his red, which last seen in the hoop, cleared by his opponent through the hoop, is now going to send black to the third corner, as far away as he could manage. For and take a wick to 13. And indeed, yes, so, right in front. So if Reg doesn't clear this, and, uh, and is, Robert then runs the hoop. Yep. Uh, this is a 2013 World Championship final in Cairo. In a sense, repeated, albeit in different circumstances. So if red's going in off would be quite an elegant solution. Oh, he's missed. Well, folks, we could be in for another two hours of play at this rate, and that really will interfere with the catering arrangements. So if he gets this, a really wonderful recovery from Fulford from what looked like a pretty terminal position. But he has to get this. And he's failed. Yeah. Still, still, still close, but um, that last little wriggle, which you noticed as yellow came came down, was just enough to make the hoop stroke really quite tricky. And of course, it deprives him of the advantage he built for himself by getting red onto the north boundary by thirteen off the opponent. Now, blue has gone south, which indicates to me that yellow has got a sort of jawsable position. So I'm sure Robert will be hanging a bit back from the hoop to avoid giving the blue an easy clearance. But red to play first from the north boundary. It's a bit strong. Mm. Yeah, that's poor judgment of pace if that was an attempted positional shot. Although what it might be, of course, is just a wish not to be cleared up to the north. Well, red's gone into absolutely perfect position, which also makes it very stop shottable by yellow, which in turn will be clearable by blue. Yes, yellow needs to dispatch black, but uh, just try not to leave it too easy a clearance for Exactly, uh, it needs to hit blue. this little bit right of centre to try and get... That was a surprisingly gentle shot, and um, hasn't moved 
black all that far. Blue ignores yellow completely, it takes, it takes position and relies on black being there to clear yellow. Now Robert, well, presumably if he can see blue, take that out of the equation. Which he does. Yeah, it's and nice holds slightly long, maybe what, five, six, six, six yard, very straight position. Just playing in nice and tight. Now that's interesting because he's caught the same slope that did yellow no good. But at least that stopped Robert Jordan. If black is hampered from 13, this is another very good reason. So, six all, and I don't know whether black can get up to 13. The red still has the first shot, and it's with blue from only just south of the halfway line. So, they'll be disappointed this is more than two yards north, I'd have thought. It's pretty yeah, well nice spot on. Yep. Yeah, maybe two and a two and a half yards north, but pretty well straight. Now Robert has to clear this because it's likely that black can interfere with yellow um, and prevent it coming coming up. So this is the shot he has to hit. And looking at the way he's preparing for it, I think he knows that too. So ideal contact, left hand cheek sending blue to the side boundary and red to the north boundary. Got it. Yep. hasn't moved it very far though. No, but the uh, the good part about that is Red's pretty much uh, in hoop running position, albeit on the boundary. Yep. Uh, so obviously Black is not hampered by the by the hoop, so that particular concern about Red's last shot with Black is But he Looks does short. seem to have left it short, which is yeah. normally seen as a great sin in these things. Um, it's not the hoop you want to be short on, but blue is um, still quite close to the line of, uh, of red, so he should be able to get a good block in. It just depends where uh, where yellow ends up. Yeah. There may well be a fair wide spot too to uh, to land the yellow, and therefore forcing uh, uh, blue to clear.
Oh. Ah, now that was looking as very interesting indeed until it hit the hit the hoop. And if that's absolutely glued, that's going to make. Now I wonder if Reg actually thinks he's got the got a perfectly runnable hoop. Yeah. It's coming in at quite an angle. I think it's about forty degrees. Yeah, I think it could also just be looking to jaws here as well. Yep. Again, it needs to be dead weight. Jaws, it is. Oh. Yeah, I think we may have left it in off for, for red here. Now then, so this given, as you say, is this given red an escape route? Robert wisely decides to give himself a proper stalk on this. It's a, if not death or glory, it's certainly. It'd be quite, I think, a blow to Ridge having played so well for so much of this game. And turning it from 3 4 down to, 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 to 5 3 up to nonetheless still lose. But this is not an easy hoop by any standards. Oh. You got it here. In off blue. Seven six. It's two games all. Very exciting finish to the game there. Yeah. Uh, great hoop run by by Robert. And five three down. Hmm. At this level, you wouldn't be betting on him. I think we just ran a back feed seven as we took the final shot. <laughs> oh, yeah. In fact, there's plenty of cable here. The end position should be almost on that court.
Hi everybody, uh, we are now obviously going into a fifth game. So Chris Clark is hoping, I hope he's going to come back to do some more commentary uh, with Stephen Mulliner for you. We'll just uh, watch the hoops being set while we wait. Hope you're enjoying everything today. Just to let you know, we've been told that the stream uh, well, the games will start at five. Uh, sorry, ten o'clock tomorrow morning. I'm also going to close this stream down and open the new stream which will be the third stream of the day just so that we can uh, segment the games up a little bit for uh, better viewing later on see you shortly